know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick, and I love finding the best versions of everyday items in Better Basics. This is Shop All Day, Comfy Cozy. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Tis the season for cooler weather and a great excuse to get comfy and cozy. We're talking fleece line leggings, comfortable moccasins, and loungewear galore. And if this time of year has you craving a warm bath and a cup of hot tea, we have must-have items for you too. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. So let's get to it. First, when I want to de-stress before the holidays, you know what I love to do? Pull on a pair of irresistibly soft PJs and take a load off. And these satin takes on the classic men's style pajamas are the ultimate in stylish loungewear. They make me feel like I'm at a luxurious spa retreat that just happens to be in my own home. And I wish you could feel this fabric. It is so incredibly soft. It is like a satin poly blend that is the feel of silk, but not the price of silk, which we love. And I am always excited when I see a great looking pair of classic men's style pajamas. This set comes in two pieces. It's got the button down top and the pull on pant, which has an elastic waistband. So they're roomy, but I also love all of these high end details. So we've got the classic notch collar. We've got the contrast piping. We have the wonderful pocket here. And of course, all these great little cuff details. Everything you look for in a great classic men's PJ. And they come in so many different colors and patterns. Check out the navy stripe. Have you ever seen anything chicer? And I have to say that the pajama trend has actually been a big trend on the runways too. We've seen lots of designers creating looks that are not just meant to be worn for lounging, that resemble pajamas. And these would make a great gift for anyone on your list if you're planning ahead. So now let's talk knits. We're always on the hunt for a sweater that is over the top soft and we hit the jackpot with the cozy up rib sweater from Aerie. Yep, it's a 10 out of 10. And this little sweater here, oh, it is so incredibly soft as well. And it's actually made with Aerie's softest yarn yet which is really saying something. And it's actually a stretch yarn. So this knit, the sweater, it's stretch, which makes it even more comfortable to wear. And I really like the silhouette. I mean, it's a little oversized. It's got a drop sleeve here and it's tunic length, which I love. Gives you a little bit more coverage when you're wearing leggings or your skinny jeans. And it's also got a lot of high-end details. This exposed seams and I also like a little notch here on the hem. So these sweaters come in eight different colors and they are such a great deal. When it gets cold outside, we need a legging that will rise to the challenge. And these popular fleece line leggings are not just comfy, but so warm and cozy. And these are the legging you will reach for again and again this winter. And what I like so much about these leggings is they're super duper versatile. So they're great for all your outdoor activities or for working out, but they're also comfortable enough that you can hang out on the couch or run around doing your errands. And these leggings are incredibly popular. They have over 15,000 ratings. And what shoppers love so much about these leggings is they are so warm. They're lined with a low pile fleece and they're insulating. But the good news is, they're also really flattering, which you can't say about every you know, fleece line legging out there. They're made with a fabric that has a four-way stretch. I mean, check that out. And 13% spandex. So they suck you in a little bit, but they're still comfy enough that you can hang out on the couch in these. And another thing that shoppers love so much about them is that they're super flattering high-waisted, so no muffin top, ladies. You gotta love that. And they come in 17 different colors and are incredibly affordable. And now that we're getting comfy, let's take an even deeper dive into cozy. 
we've got the best-selling shearling slippers from heritage brand LL Bean for the whole family that aren't just good, they're wicked good. No, really, that's their name. And these moccasins are also wicked popular. The brand says that they've sold over 4 million pair over the past five years. And in December, their peak month, they say they sell one pair every seven seconds. So that's pretty popular. And here's a fun fact, shearling is actually moisture wicking. So no sweaty feet. You gotta love that, right? You could wear these inside or out. Now here's what I think sends these moccasins over the edge for me. They make them for the entire family, from the littlest toddler to adults, and check it out. You can do a mommy and me, or a daddy and me, or a whole family moccasin situation. And they come in lots of colors and cute patterns like plaid. These are such a winner. We all need a sock that's got your back by way of your feet. <laughs> These dreamy, super soft, cozy chenille socks by Ugg are the ultimate in comfort. They're like a magical instant relaxation device. You put them on and instantly your feet are enveloped with a soothing softness that begs you to put your feet up. And I know that you guys know the Ugg boot, but did you know that Ugg makes socks that are just as comfortable? So these are made with a chenille thread. They're knit in a confetti pattern. And what's so great about these socks is you can wear them all year long instead of slippers. But if you want to carry that dreaminess around with you throughout the day, you can also wear these socks with your winter boots. And these socks come in seven different colors. And these are a sock that's going to give back. So what could be more comfy and cozy than a chill pill? <gasps> chill pill bath bomb, that is. These fizzy adult bath bombs from beloved beauty brand Way just might inspire you to take a little well-deserved me time and time to recharge. How cute is this little concept, right? The chill pill. So the obsession is real with these chill pills. They are so luxurious. I mean, they really do make you feel like you're getting away on a fabulous spa retreat. And this brand was actually founded by Jen Atkin, who's a celebrity hairstylist. You met her on our show a couple of months ago. And what people love so much about about these chill pills. These are so easy to use. All you do is snap and sink into a warm tub and get ready to relax. So these not only help to cleanse, but they also help to moisturize. They're infused with jojoba oil. They're infused with saffler oil, hemp oil, and they really do encourage you to get a little zen. And lastly, just when you thought it couldn't get any cozier, we couldn't help ourselves from sharing a very modern take on some of the plushest loungewear you've ever seen or felt. So this is the Skims Teddy Collection. And yes, you guys have heard of Skims. It's Kim Kardashian West's line, and it is really an innovative line. I am so excited about sort of the twist they've done on that teddy trend. So normally we think of the teddy fleece as maybe an outdoor outerwear fabric, but this brand has taken the texture of Teddy and made it so incredibly soft. You just want to snuggle up in it, and that's what people do, of course. And what's also really cool about this brand, they've taken that whole concept of loungewear, and they've really modernized it with the silhouettes. We've got a full-length zip-up jacket, but we've also got this wonderful crop jacket that zip up. They also have wonderful silhouettes for bottoms, like the great wide-leg track pant that are just as cozy as they are fashionable. And one of my absolute favorite things about this collection, and Skims in general, is that they've really pioneered, along with Yeezy, the whole new nude trend, the new neutral. And I think all of these wonderful nude colors are based on beautiful skin tones, and they feel so modern. So this truly is a very fashion-forward way to do loungewear. So let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Women's Classic Pajama Set, the Airy Cozy Up Rib Sweater, the Thermal Leggings, the L.L. Bean Wicked Good Moccasins for men, women, and kids, the Ugg Socks, the Way Chill Pills, and the Skims Teddy Collection. 
And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Mako and Lobu is talking style and comfort. And later, Jen Fallick has plush robes and bath caddies. Sign me up. Don't go away. Welcome back, I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Okay, I am so excited to chat with fashion expert Melissa Garcia because even when you are comfy cozy, it doesn't mean you can't be stylish while relaxing. Hi, Melissa. So good to have you here. Oh, it's so, so good to be here with you guys. I so enjoy seeing you and being here. And of course, we're going to talk about amazing cozy stuff. So what better than that? All right, let's talk about it. So now that the weather is getting cooler, Melissa, what are some of your favorite ways to get your comfy, cozy vibes on? It's funny because I'm not a big fan of the colds. I don't, are you? I mean, I usually like warm weather. The same? Same. Yeah, but there's something really special about like just staying home and putting on like cozy PJs and getting by the fire on your couch and just getting like warm and cozy. So I do love that part of it. I do too. And I have to be honest, when I'm at home and I'm comfy cozy, I look a hot mess. So what are, <laughs> what are some ways to get your comfy cozy vibes on but while still looking stylish? So listen, and I'll be, I'm, I'm a fashionista, so okay. I'm the first to say fashion is important. However, I think there's an exception. When you're home and you want to be cozy and comfy, I think all rules go out the door. Wear whatever you want and just be warm and comfy and cozy. So I'm putting that out there. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's get started with the first item, which by the way, I'm so glad you brought all these picks for us. It's actually called the Comfy. Yes, so this goes along the lines of what I was just saying. There's sometimes you have to sacrifice fashion for comfort and warmth, and this is absolutely one of those times. It's the best $45 you'll ever probably spend. My entire family has one of these. So they are ginormous. They're one size fits all. 
They are the coziest, yummiest. The inside is like this yummy, warm Sherpa. And it's like this huge blanket that you oh. wear. It is incredible. I'm telling you, myself, my husband, we all have our own. And you'll find us on the couch, snuggled up in this, nice and toasty, warm. It's amazing. I am obsessed with the fact that you have the color black. Because listen, I mean, I know it's machine washable, but after I'm comfy and cozy, I'm not going to throw it in the machine after every wash. No. <laughs> so I love that. And it's one size fits all as well. Okay, let's move on to the next item, which by the way is this beanie, which has the word cozy in its title. How cool is that? I know, and it is the coziest, comfiest beanie. You know, when your head is warm, it really maintains so much of your body temperature and your heat. But this one is really special because again, fashion is my wheelhouse and not all beanies are the same. I have to say they all might look the same, but they don't all fit the same. And this one not only is really comfortable and cozy, has that cute pom-pom on the top, but it's also an incredible fit. It fits your head perfectly. It's not too thick and chunky. There's not too much extra fabric on top that kind of flops around. It's really the perfect fit. And I love that they have the perfect neutral colors to choose from, whites, grays, tans, beiges, like black, of course. Those are the colors you really want. And of course, we don't always want to do our hair. A beanie is the perfect thing to throw on when you want to look pulled together, so but you don't have time. That's so true. Listen, we do comfy and cozy at home, but like if you're going out to a football game, it's the perfect thing to cover up like a bad hair day or just like when you have your hair down. Love it. Let's move on to the pajamas, the flannel pajamas. So cool. Tell me about them. So I love a great pair of flannel pajamas, and these are like the ultimate in flannel pajamas. I think when we all really think about flannel PJs, LL Bean automatically comes to mind, and there's a reason why. It's because they're the highest quality flannel. They're made of Portuguese flannel. They have a ton of color options. They're so super soft. They're, they're warm, but they're not too thick that they're gonna overheat in them. I love them. They're great, a perfect piece of clothing to add into your sort of cozy repertoire this season. And also a great gift for yourself or someone you love. I was just thinking about that, that I might gift them either to my sister or my husband. Is it cheesy? Is it not stylish that I want us to match together for the holidays? I love that. I think it's adorable. Listen, again, all rules go out the door of the holidays. Wear whatever you want. Match. Match your dog. Match everyone. <laughs> match everyone. Okay, you said all rules everyone. go out of the door, but my number one rule for just relaxing at home and getting really, really cozy is I gotta have hot chocolate. Let's talk about this pic. I mean, it's just so cozy. Oh my gosh, a girl after my heart. I am a chocolate fanatic. It's a problem. And <laughs> this hot cocoa is next level hot cocoa because normally you're used to those powdered hot cocos, right? Right. But when you open this one up and you see it, it's actual chocolate oh. shaving. The only thing that's missing is a marshmallow on top. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. I am all set for my night in. Oh my God, I wish I had one too. <laughs> <We can hear. laughs> take a sip for me. <laughs> I'll take an extra sip for you. Thanks, Melissa. Those were great tips. Now let's run through all the products one more time. The Comfy, the Abercrombie & Fitch Cozy Palm Beanie, the L.O. Bean flannel pajamas, and the William Sonoma hot chocolate. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Jim Fallick has plush robes and all you need for a cozy night in in the coolest season. Don't go away.
everyone. Welcome back to Shop All Day. I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick. This episode has been all about getting comfy and cozy, and I have the latest must-have items to create the calm before the holiday storm at home. From plush robes to a bath caddy that will make your bath feel more like a spa. And see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. So let's get to it. We're gonna start with the ultimate symbol of comfy, cozy season, and that is a good, soft throw. This one is a personal favorite. This is the throw that my family, we fight over it every night. It's a luxury throw, comes in 43 colors in three different sizes. The reason that we love this one so much is there's nothing softer. There's different versions, so you can get one that's dual-sided with Sherpa and fur. This one is dual-sided with Sherpa and shag. This is my personal favorite one. So it's somehow really light, but also just feels warm and cozy. You can bundle yourself up in it. You can choose which side you want. If you want to go with the Sherpa side, you want to go with the shag side or faux fur. And it also gives you styling options. If you want it to look a little dressier, you can choose one side versus in a room that feels a little more casual, you can flip it onto the other. Also, they're machine washable. We use these every single day, so it's wonderful to know that I can just throw them in the washer dryer and have a fresh one every night. Now, once you're snuggled up in this, trust me, you're not gonna wanna get out of it. Once I'm bundled up in my blanket, the last thing I wanna do is get up, run to the kitchen, do other things like that. So, I am obsessed with this next product. These tea drops are the best way to get a perfect cup of tea every single time with zero effort. You take this drop right here, and see it's already made for you. Drop it right into your cup of tea. You can use it for iced tea too. The brand says that all the ingredients in these tea drops are finely sourced. There's organic elements, there's spices, there's fine sugars from all over the globe. So you're getting a delicious cup of tea with top of the line ingredients. But now that we're talking comfy cozy, I like to think of it in a cup of warm water, drop it in, let it dissolve, and minutes later, you have the perfect cup of tea and you don't have to get up and Throw out a tea bag. You don't have to worry if you have the right infuser tool. There's different versions too. You can go with sweetened or unsweetened. And there's flavors like blueberry acai. There's a rose earl gray. My daughter loves the citrus ginger because that one has no caffeine. It also says on the package, it gives you an indication of if it's caffeinated, if it's not, and if it is caffeinated, how caffeinated it is. Very helpful for me when I'm trying to dole out tea every night to my kids. Moving on to screen-free serenity. You know, a lot of us already know that coloring is a great way to mentally unwind. It's definitely trending and it is not just for kids. It is such a great comfy, cozy indoor activity for those chilly fall and winter nights. And this coloring book, I personally use, I love it. My kids keep stealing it from me. It is a total win. It's the Bandeau Brighten Up Coloring Book. And the reason that this is so amazing for adults is that the designs in it are sourced from 12 different artists from all over the globe. And they're actually drawings that even if you're not naturally an artist, when you color them in, it looks professional. And it's not just fridge worthy. These puppies are frame worthy. I love the designs in here. Side note, they're best used with either crayons or colored pencils because you don't want the color to bleed through the page. The sheets can be torn off, so if you're hanging out with friends or if other people want to color, if you want to put it up, you can easily tear off the perforated pages. And it's just such a relaxing, screen-free way to unwind, to let your mind relax, and to sort of embrace your inner child and your inner creativity without having to worry about coloring inside the lines. Some like coloring books, others prefer a warm bath to unwind. And if you want to take a warm bath, you're going to need this Amazon bath caddy. I get really antsy in the bath. I know you're supposed to soak for a certain number of minutes. Everyone says, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. After three minutes, I'm itching to get out and see what else I need to get done. What's great about this bath caddy is that you can have everything that you need to keep yourself occupied in the tub right at arm's reach. You can put a book down, you can put your iPad there if you wanna watch something on the screen. There's a spot for a cup of tea or coffee. You can even put a glass of wine. There's a little ledge for a candle. So it really has room for everything that you may need once you get in the tub and you don't wanna get out to get. It allows you to sit, soak, and relax for as long as you'd like. This one is better basic worthy because it's adjustable. So no matter the size of your tub, this typically can fit multitude of sizes and it's bamboo, so it's high quality and lightweight, but it's covered in a waterproof varnish. So even if it gets a little bit wet, no harm, no foul. 
If you want to take your serene soak to the next level, you need a bath fizzer to go along with your bath caddy. This one is from Uncommon Goods, and look at these. They look like little rock candies. I mean, they look delicious, and they smell amazing. What I love about the bath fizzer is it's sort of like an upgraded new version of a traditional bath bomb. You just take it, swirl it around in the tub when you've got them filled with warm water. It fizzes up into the most delicious smelling fizzy bath. I've been trying them all. I love the lemon scented one. And it just takes the whole bath experience to the next level. Plus, if you're thinking of gifting, this is a great gift because most people don't have this. The bath fizzer is a really new and interesting way to take your bath to the next level. So now that you've had your bath, you need the plush robe. After a bath, you really want to be extra comfy, extra cozy, wrap yourself up in this. This is from Target. It's the women's cozy plush robe. And uh, it's the softest thing ever. I love this brand, actually. It's from Stars Above. This brand is my go-to for pajamas because with their pajamas, I find that they're really soft and comfy, but they never feel heavy. And the robe is the exact same thing. It feels so plush and soft, but it doesn't feel like it weighs you down. It doesn't make you feel uncomfortably hot. The style, of course, the classic with the shawl, the wrap so you can give yourself a little tie, and the key, you've got to have pockets. This has two really great deep pockets. Put this on after the bath, put your remote in one pocket, your uh, snack or your phone in the other, and you are good to go. There's four different colors to choose from, and I just love this soft velvety finish. So now that you are all relaxed and you're comfy cozy as can be, let's talk about the one thing that you need to get comfy cozy the second you get into bed and fall off into an amazing night of sleep. This is the Nod Pod. If you have never seen the Nod Pod before, you've got to get familiar with this thing. This basically is like a weighted blanket, but for your eyes. It has just a little bit of weight to it, so when you put it on, it sinks right onto your face. It blocks out all the light, making it easier to fall asleep, and it's dual-sided, so you've got a sort of warm side and a cool side. If you want something a little cooling, you want something a little toasty, you can even put this in the fridge or warm it up in the microwave to give it a little extra boost. The kicker with this, what makes it so interesting, is that the way it ties in the back, it doesn't create a lump. It lays totally flat. So if you want to lay back and just chill, this isn't going to give you that uncomfortable bump. There's a lot of fun colors to choose from, too. And when it comes to ending your comfy, cozy night on the perfect note, this is going to win every single time. Let's go through these products one more time, and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the Luxury Throw Blanket, the Tea Drop from Uncommon Goods, the Bandeau Brighten Up Coloring Book, the Bath Caddy, the Uncommon Goods Rock Candy Bath Fizzer, the Target Women's Cozy Plush Robe, and the Nod Pot. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on all of your better basics and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop All Day. Say there today all day. Are you looking to ditch some dairy? Well, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Samadata remaking two classically creamy dishes without the cream. First up, she's going to make a vegan mac and cheese with a velvety sauce. Then for dessert, Sama turns overripe bananas into a luscious, dairy-free, nice cream. Can you imagine if they started making, like, onion-scented candles? That would be such a crazy choice. I'd probably buy one. If you can't eat dairy, then don't worry, I got you. I'm always coming up with new ways to make creative, delicious dips, fillings, and desserts without any of the dairy. I really just want to hashtag make dairy free cool. I'm going to show you how to make two of my favorite recipes that are traditionally loaded with lots of cheese and milk. First up, my masala mac and cheese, and next, because we can never forget dessert, my banana cardamom ice cream. One of the first ways that I dabbled into cooking, and maybe it's a bit generous to say cooking, was through boxed mac and cheese. I used to love that mildly suspect bright orange powder. 
But today, we are making my masala mac and cheese. The flavor profile is a little bit more elevated, but still just as creamy and decadent. Let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is dice up my onion. So I wanted to add some cooked onions into the sauce because I think it adds a lot more flavor. We want different levels of flavor and spice, and by cooking these onions down in some olive oil, it's really gonna get us there. I'm gonna peel this guy. I am just dicing my onion. Right there. Little rough, don't worry, because we are going to blend it later. After it's been cooked, of course. I've just diced my onions, and now I'm just gonna heat up some olive oil on my pan. Okay, my olive oil is shimmering, time to add my onions. I also wanna make sure I'm seasoning my onions with some salt and pepper. A little salt and some freshly ground black pepper. Okay, these onions look delicious. They look nice and golden brown. I'm gonna turn my stove off, set these aside to cool, and get to work on my creamy sauce. Before we get going on my sauce, I have to tell you about cashews. When you soak cashews, they absorb a lot of that water, expanding them and making them a lot easier to blend. Because they're so buttery, when you actually do blend them after they've been soaked, they can create creamy dips, dressing, sauces, desserts, mac and cheese sauce, anything, you name it. But if you skip soaking them, and please don't, you'll get a really crumbly and mealy sauce, and that's just not cute. It's really important that you soak your cashews for at least 24 hours overnight, or you can flash soak them for an hour in hot water. Best part about this mac and cheese is it comes together in this blender. What could be better? Mac and cheese in a blender? I'm on board. We're gonna add our cashews into our blender. Make sure when you're making this recipe that you only use raw cashews. No salt on it, no roasting. Because I want a little bit of a sweet taste and I want that nice orange color for this mac and cheese, I'm using a roasted sweet potato. I'm just gonna peel the skin off with my hands. By the way, if you're worried that I'm handling a hot potato, I'm not. This has been cooled. Don't worry about me. I'm okay. I'm just gonna take about half of this, pop it in my blender. You thought I forgot about my onions? You were wrong. They're going straight in here. Now to get that really delicious, cheesy, savory flavor, I'm using some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a really common vegan cheese replacement. Adding this straight in my blender. It adds a bit of umami as well. Now for my spices. This is a masala mac and cheese after all. Got some cumin. Adding a bit of cayenne. Cayenne gives me that heat. I want a little bit of spice in this masala mac. I'm gonna add some turmeric. Turmeric is not only delicious, but it also adds that really gorgeous yellow color that we're chasing for this mac and cheese. And finally, we've got some garlic powder. To help everything blend together, I've got some vegetable broth. Veggie broth is also a bit better than adding something like water because it's got a little bit more flavor in there. Okay, are you ready to blend? Okay, let's do it. And if you need to, feel free to scrape down the sides of the blender to get everything well incorporated. Boom. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt, a little more pepper. Back to blending we go. Okay, I'm really pleased to announce that my mac and cheese sauce is done. Looks amazing. Time to make our pasta. Got my cute little elbows here. My water is boiling. Don't forget, please, please don't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? I'm gonna do that right now. Pasta water is salted. It's time for our pasta. So I am using elbows here for my little cute pasta shape. I wanted to get that very iconic mac and cheese vibe, but you can totally use whatever short pasta works for you. A shell would be nice here, penne would be nice here. Okay, so I'm just gonna fish for a piece, see how we're doing on doneness. This is the best way to check. Just pinch it with your fingers or just bite into it. Perfect. Our pasta is ready. Time to drain. Don't drop the sama. <laughs> Don't drop it. 
One more thing to do is just add our sauce to our pasta. I'm gonna add this into my bowl. I'm really excited about this sauce. Just so you know, this makes a lot of sauce. I like a saucy mac, but you can totally reserve some for later if you want it to be a little less saucy. All right, time to plate. <sighs> Sorry, I just gasped. I was just taken aback. It's so creamy. All right, little fresh parsley just to top. Little bit of color, little bit of green, little bit of herb just to bring this out. And then I'm just gonna finish it with some freshly ground black pepper. Have you ever seen a more velvety mac and cheese? I just have to capture this. Here I go. <sighs> this is gonna be an action shot. Okay, I think I got it. Time for me to dig in. I've never been more happy than this moment right now. <laughs> there's so much flavor going on and it's so creamy. You would not believe there's no dairy in this. I'm not telling you to throw away your box mac and cheese, but um, I'm definitely telling you to give this a try. You will not regret it. Mm. So good. It's me and I can never have any dinner or lunch without a little bit of dessert. So up next, I've got my banana cardamom ice cream and you're absolutely gonna love it. I'm gonna grab the ingredients. If you thought that you needed an ice cream maker to make ice cream at home, then think again. My banana cardamom ice cream comes together in a blender and takes a little nice nap in the freezer to create the most luscious vegan ice cream. Let's make it. Listen closely. I hate wasting bananas. It's so sad. Ripe bananas, really spotty bananas, are perfect for so many different types of recipes and especially this ice cream. They help create that really luscious, creamy texture without any of the dairy. I've got my frozen bananas here. I'm just gonna pop them into my blender. When I freeze bananas, I like to cut them up in little pieces just to make it easier to blend. Really important that you're using ripe frozen bananas because we're not actually gonna add any added sugar to this recipe. All the sweetness is gonna come straight from those bananas. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of creamy almond butter into my blender. Because the bananas are super sweet, I like adding a nut butter like an almond or even a peanut butter just to balance out that sweetness. I love using cardamom in this ice cream because it's got this really nice piney, fruity undertone. Really delicious. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can totally sub cinnamon instead. Now to help everything come together, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk. Here's the important thing. We're not trying to go for a smoothie here, right? So we're just gonna add a little bit of milk just to get the blender going. Time to blend. Time to scrape down the sides of the blender. 
I'd rather scrape down the size of the blender a million times to get that really creamy, thick, almost soft serve consistency ice cream rather than add too much almond milk and be left with a smoothie. Can we just take a moment for my blender, please? It literally does the absolute most for me. It's key when I'm creating all of my delicious dairy-free recipes. Okay, I think we made it. I could eat this now, and you could too, but I do want a little bit of an ice cream scoopable consistency, so that's why I'm transferring it to the freezer. Okay, ice cream is in my container safely. It's ready for the freezer for an hour or more. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but patience is key here. Let's do it. My ice cream is done. A little patience gets us a very long way. I am just gonna cut some strawberries to top my ice cream with and then I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> no, I did not just sneak a strawberry. I have been waiting for a long time for my dessert, so it is time to scoop my ice cream. I'm very excited. <sighs> I just gasped <laughs> yet again. Oh, you thought I was a single scoop girl? Think again. <laughs> Oh, you thought I was a double scoop girl? Think once more. Time to top with some of my strawberries, just for some color, just for some freshness. I would say this looks too pretty to eat, but I'm for sure gonna eat it. I will take a picture though. Okay, I'm ready to taste. It is crazy that you can make something this creamy with frozen bananas. It's crazy, it's wild. The bananas are so sweet and we've got that almond butter to balance it out and that cardamom brings all the flavors to life. The next time you're craving something super creamy and delicious but you can't have dairy, look, there's options for you. These are so easy to make. I made so many of my dairy-free recipes in my blender Easy to whip up, just as decadent, just as creamy and delicious without the dairy. Hold me back. I am going in again. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. This is seriously so good. It's like, 
the sweetness is perfect. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's like my little Goldilocks sweetness. Mmm. It's so good. Mmm. Who doesn't love a muffin? As for me, whenever I enter any bakery or cafe, my eyes go directly to the muffins. I am obsessed. Am I the hashtag muffin woman? I don't know, that's a question for another day. But I've always wanted to create my favorite bakery style muffins at home. So after a little testing, I came up with two that are always on rotation for me. First up, a blueberry muffin just sweetened with some honey and lemon poppy seed muffin tops with a cute lemon cashew glaze. I always bake with chocolate over fruit. That's typically my MO. But I will say, I always make a little exception when it comes to a blueberry muffin. They're just my favorite staple comfort baked good. But I was thinking, why should I go to a bakery when I can make one in my own kitchen? So let's get started. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I've lined my little muffin tin with these cute muffin liners. They're so cute. Now I can start on my wet ingredients. First up, I've got one egg. Just cracked my egg in here. Gonna whisk it really well. I want no separation between the yolk and the whites. This looks nice and uniform. Now, I'm gonna add in my almond butter. I find that the almond butter kind of adds a really nice nuttiness to these muffins. It's so delicious. Gonna mix my egg and my almond butter together really nicely so it's well incorporated. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and add my melted and cooled coconut oil. This is gonna serve as a nice butter replacement. Okay, and now, I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract. And for my star, I cannot have my honey blueberry muffins without the honey, that would simply be wrong. I like to use local honey for these muffins especially because it's such an important flavor component. I really wanna use the good stuff. And finally, I want a little touch of acidity just to bring out all of those flavors, so I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh lemon juice. Mix the lemon juice in there, it smells so good. Okay, my wet ingredients look perfect. They're well incorporated, they're well mixed, which means it's time for me to move on to my dry ingredients. I'm using almond flour for this recipe, which is honestly my favorite flour to bake with. It's super cakey and dense, so it creates a really nice texture in these muffins. I'm gonna add some baking powder and a little pinch of salt, just a little, perfect. Now I'm just gonna whisk my dry ingredients together, make sure everything's well incorporated. You know what time it is. <laughs> it's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients. We want an even, even muffin batter. It smells so good already. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk to help everything come together a bit better. This is looking great. Now, this is a blueberry muffin. So I've got my gorgeous fresh blueberries here. Just proceed with caution when you're folding your blueberries into the batter. We don't want them to burst. They're precious, they're delicate. Just like, be careful of their feelings, okay? Okay. We look nice and well incorporated here, so it's time for me to add them into my muffin tin. I like using a cookie scoop for cookies, for muffins, because it allows me to just capture even amounts of batter per muffin tin, per cookie, makes it really consistent. And then you get a nice even bake too. Perfect. All right, so all that's left to do is bake them. They're going in the oven 30 to 35 minutes. I'm really excited to see them on the other end of this. Um. Did I open a bakery? Just wondering. They look so cute. I've let them cool for 15 minutes, which means that it's definitely time for me to eat them. Okay, let's take a look. I mean, come on. They look so good. Before I dive into these, okay, I'm gonna have to take a picture. I'm trying to start my own bakery. I gotta have some documentation of this moment. Pretty iconic stuff, I have to say. 
I think it's time for me to try them. I think I've waited long enough. Here's a question. Do you bite into your muffin or do you rip a piece off? I'm gonna be dainty today and rip a little piece off. Here I go. Okay, oh, almost lost a blueberry. Hmm, it's crazy how well the blueberries and the honey go together. Mm. It's so good. Speaking of muffins, if you only eat the muffin tops, don't worry, I'm not judging you. In fact, my next recipe is for you because I'm gonna be making my lemon poppy seed muffin tops. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. You and I both know that we are kind of only here for the muffin tops, or at least that's my favorite part of the muffin. So for my next recipe, I thought I would whip up a lemon poppy seed muffin top with a lemon cashew glaze to satisfy all of you muffin top lovers out there. And I know you're out there. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and because I love being prepared, I have lined my pan with parchment paper and now I get to work on my wet ingredients. All right, I'm gonna crack two eggs. Now I'm gonna add in my melted and cooled coconut oil. All right, whisking that nicely. I'm using maple syrup and coconut sugar to sweeten these muffin tops. They're my two favorite sweeteners. They add a really nice, robust taste, especially when paired together. Adding my maple syrup. Reminds me of pancakes and waffles, but it's kind of better in a muffin. This is a lemon poppy seed muffin top, which means we can't make it without the lemons, right? First, I'm gonna zest some lemons. I love using the lemon zest. It really amplifies that lemon flavor in these muffin tops. Now, I'm gonna juice my lemons. Because I love precision, <laughs> I'm gonna juice my lemons straight into this measuring cup so I know exactly how much I'm using. Okay, we've got our lemon juice, and now we're just gonna add it straight into the rest of our wet ingredients. Mix that up really nicely. And for one more layer of our sweetness, I'm gonna add some coconut sugar. It's super warm, it's rich, it's golden. All right, our dry ingredients, very important. Just as important as our wet ingredients. Here, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. I find that almond flour is pretty dense. The only ingredient is almonds. And with oats, it's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna add some baking powder, a little pinch of salt to bring out all of that sweetness. Just a little. I'm gonna whisk this together. Just for a little something extra, I'm gonna add in some rolled oats. I find that this gives a lot of texture. It's really nice to have in these muffin tops. And because I'm really trying to recreate that iconic lemon poppy seed muffin, we have to have our poppy seeds. Okay, this looks really nice. It's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients. Can add this in, perfect. Just gonna fold everything in super gently. Okay. This looks perfect. Time to use my giant cookie scoop and scoop these onto my pan. 
I like using these because it allows me to get a really nice uniform muffin top. So they're all even, they're all the same size. You know what's really great about a muffin top? You don't need a muffin tin to make them. Just use your cookie sheet. It's a game changer. These are ready for a little journey in the oven, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown around the edges. Let's go. I've let my muffins cool for about 20 minutes and you know what they need. You know what they're ready for? A little glaze. I'm gonna just preface this for you. I just wanna tell you that this glaze is kind of like a cross between a glaze and a frosting. So I do tend to call it a glosting. And I know I made that word up and I'm honestly pretty proud of myself for it. So let's make our glosting. To make this really creamy, delicious glaze slash frosting, AKA glosting, we are going to be using some cashews. I've soaked these cashews and when you soak them, it actually allows them to absorb that liquid and become really nice and tender and plump. This is gonna be the perfect thing to just blitz up in our blender because it's gonna be really luscious and smooth. I drained the water from my soaked cashews and I'm just gonna pop them in my blender. To complement that gorgeous lemon flavor in our lemon poppy seed muffin tops, I'm going to add some lemon juice into my blender, into my glossing. Now, to sweeten this up, I'm going to add some maple syrup. Time for a little oat milk. Finally, to bring out all of those flavors, balance everything out, a little pinch of salt. Now I'm just going to blend this up. Look at this gorgeous glossing. All right, we're ready to put this glaze on. Let me give you some options because we love options. You can do a little drizzle like this. It's so pretty. It's so thick and creamy. Do a little delicate, unfussy drizzle. Or if you want to really commit, you can just gloss that whole thing. Don't be shy. Getting it to really fall over the sides like that. It's really good. One last thing to really finish it off, seal the deal, a little extra poppy seed garnish. Those poppy seeds add some nice nuttiness. Gotta take a picture. I mean, <laughs> that frosting, it like, who gave the frosting permission to do that right there? It's almost unfair. Now it's my time to eat. My turn to eat. Pretty, right? Okay, I'm ready. You know what's the worst thing in a lemon baked good? Not enough lemon. This is so tart, perfectly sweet. I have no rules for myself. <laughs> mm. 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 I don't know, I feel like I've found a new calling in life, and I think it might be to open a muffin store. We'll have plenty of muffin tops, plenty of regular muffins. I hope this inspired you to make muffins at home. I mean, this is so easy to make. The frosting slash glossing, also very easy. I just hope you never go without a muffin again in your own home. Welcome to The Boost. Today's show is full of heartwarming and uplifting stories that are sure, sure to boost your spirits. And we're going to start off with a Today exclusive. Last year, a man with no flying experience pulled off a miracle landing after the pilot experienced a mid-flight medical emergency. Well, we caught up with both of them during a surprise reunion. But first, a look back at the remarkable story that captured the nation's attention. It's been more than a year since 65-year-old pilot Ken Allen embarked on the scariest flight of his life. I've got a serious situation here about pilot and uh, Last May, while he was nearly 12,000 feet in the air, Allen suddenly became unconscious, quickly turning the flight from the Bahamas to Fort Pierce, Florida into a life or death emergency for everyone on board. That's when Darren Harrison, one of two others on that single engine Cessna 28, stepped in. Harrison sharing with today the moment he took the controls. All I saw when I came up to the front 
was water out the right window and I knew it was coming quick. The plane is in a nosedive essentially. Correct. Yes. And at that point, I knew if I didn't react that, that we would die. What happened next has been called a miracle. Harrison, who had zero flying experience, took over the pilot seat. With help from an air traffic controller on the ground, he was able to land the plane safely at Palm Beach International Airport. And when did you exhale? I threw the headset on the dash and said the biggest prayer I've ever said in my life. The last part of the prayer and the strongest part was for the guy in the back. Because I was, I knew it was not a good situation. Alan was fighting for his life in the back of that plane. Emergency vehicles met them upon landing, and Alan was later rushed to Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center, where he underwent a nine-hour surgery to repair a torn aorta. The medical team led by Dr. Nishant Patel. I was happy to be awake because I remember Dr. Patel saying, you know, we're going to do everything we can to save your life. 17 months later, after making a full recovery and along with his doctor, Alan is back on his feet and ready for takeoff. Earlier this month, he was medically cleared by the FAA to fly again. I went through um, six additional doctors, poked, prodded, scanned. Most patients with this diagnosis don't make it. So to see him go through all of that and get approval to fly, that truly is amazing. Whatever you can grab onto. To mark the occasion, Alan decided to go back up in that exact same plane, this time with his life-saving doctor by his side. Clear to land, 28 left, 3 Lima Delta. A landing to remember. Thanks for having me up there. Yeah. That was awesome. Amazing day. Amazing day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so happy to have pilot Ken Allen with us along with his cardiac surgeon, Dr. Nishant Patel. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. I love that you're, you, I was just saying, now you both have been in each other's offices, your cockpit and your operating right. room. How are you feeling, Ken? I feel great. Yeah? I feel like my old self. So you, just, it, you actually, you have been flying, but you had to get medically cleared to ever fly solo again. And that's the milestone you've just reached. What did it take to get to this point? 17 months, um, six doctors different uh, tests, scans, uh, neurological tests, cardiac tests, just a bunch of uh, different analytical things that they had to go through. You've flown your whole life. What does it mean to you to, to get back well, there and do it again? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. I, I really didn't think I was gonna be able to, but I, I don't give up easily, so. <laughs> I had to see it through. Well, neither does your doctor, Dr. He Patel. Does. When Ken came in, it, it turned out he hadn't had a stroke, but he had an aortic tear, something that is certainly life-threatening. You even left a voicemail for his wife saying, there's a 50-50 chance we don't make it, we're going into surgery. Can you tell me about the condition he was in? Right, so, you know, when they landed the plane, he was incoherent, he wasn't moving part, part of his body, so they thought he had a stroke. They took him to our sister hospital and then rushed him over to our hospital um, when they made the diagnosis of an aortic dissection. So um, when I saw him in the ER, thankfully he, he looked like he was relatively stable, but you know when you come in with stroke-like symptoms and a tear in the aorta, that really portends a poor prognosis. So um, time is of the essence. You have to get him to the operating room, do what you can to save his life. Yeah, I mean, it, it's miraculous, not only that Darren Harrison, who we saw in the piece, right. was able to land the plane, but that you ended up landing at the hospital in Palm Beach where you hadn't expected to, which was close to the hospital you needed. Correct. If anything had gone wrong, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. Absolutely. I mean, we look at all the things that went right. Yeah. So. That's a good way to look yeah. at it, including Dr. Patel. Now, have you stayed in touch with Darren? Who of is course. The, you know, who, of course, learned how to fly a, fly a plane <laughs> on the fly with you in the back seat. We are connected for life, just yes. like we're connected for life. Well, no, I heard you guys were supposed to have lunch this week. Yes, Darren had a little, uh, uh, like a cold or something, so we had to cancel. Well, I was going to out Darren right now. It's a, it was a little white lie that we made him tell, because Darren's here. Are you Where, kidding me? No, I'm not. Where are you, Darren? Here he is. Oh, my God. We thought it'd be fun to get you all together. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe this. Uh, and you know Dr. Patel? Nice to meet you. 
Hi, Darren. There's my buddy. How you doing? Oh, good. Have good. a seat. Oh, well, sit, I know that you can sit between those two. Okay. Darren, I know, because we've, we've kept in touch. You two are, like, this is a life bond now. Yeah. Y'all are brothers. Sure. <laughs> yeah. What has it been like? I haven't seen you in person since this had just it's happened. Great. It's been great. So, and I know you got a new baby, little Mary Mark. Oh, yeah. 14 it, months old. Uh, She's doing fantastic. I mean, when you think about it, I know we just talked about Ken. It's a miracle. So many things went right. I know that's how you think about it, oh, too. 100%. Absolutely. I was telling somebody the other day, if we'd have flown to the airport that we were supposed to fly to, they probably wouldn't have made it because it was in the wrong location. Yeah. I mean, yeah. one thing after another. And there were three people in the plane that day, mm -hmm. if not for you getting behind the controls. I mean, I don't know if you were still in shock when we first talked back in May of 2022, but I'm sure you've reflected upon it again and again. Do you still think about that day? I do. Especially when we were flying in the plane last week. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Well, you guys got right back in the saddle, I noticed, both of you. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. What do you think about, when you do, what do you think about that day? Uh, just, occasionally you'll have flashbacks about it, but just most importantly, you know, how everything worked out and just, it all came together. Yeah. It was just a miracle within itself. Yeah. Well, tell me about this friendship now. And have you guys gone, you know, he's got his wings now to fly oh, solo. Yeah. Are you going to fly with him? <laughs> he's flying my wife next week in yeah, the Charleston. Okay. Oh my gosh. So, okay. That's a, that's a, yeah. that's a vote of confidence. I'm taking the ladies up to uh, uh, Charleston, yeah. right? So yeah. For a girl's trip? For a girl's Where's trip. my invite? <laughs> <laughs> I see you right over there. Your wife, Brittany's right over there as well. That's I mean, good. she was seven months pregnant when this yeah. happened. Yeah. When you just think about how this beautiful story could have turned out so differently. Yeah. I mean, I, I had so much guilt no. that I let these guys no. you know, endanger their lives. Mm. I mean, the first thing besides crying was apologizing yeah. to him and Russ. I mean, I was, no I felt so bad. Once and for all, Dr. Patel, it's not Ken's fault, right? Wow. It could Jeez. happen to anyone. Right. I mean, you know, risk factors, high blood pressure. There are some genetic conditions that can put you at, at risk for something like this. The problem is, you know, one of the biggest risk factors is an aortic aneurysm. And most patients don't know they have an aortic aneurysm. It's usually something that's incidentally found. So most patients, unfortunately, who have this problem have no clue that something like this could right. happen. Wow. You're amazing, Darren. We know you're amazing. I love that the first time you got together, Darren, you said he was apologizing. And then you finally said what? I had to grab him by the shoulders and just say, stop. He, he no did. more. <laughs> he did. Quit. No more apologizing. That's right. It's a beautiful thing that came of this. You know, I'm in awe of our doctors and what you guys do and your team on the fly, nine hour surgery, ready to go. Thank you. Thank yes. you, Ken. Congratulations. You're Thank back you. in the air. Darren, it's always good to see you. On the boost with a mother and daughter whose remarkable relationship helped them beat breast cancer together. They joined us right here in studio. But first, their remarkable story. At age 55, mom and lifelong Ohioan Doreen Wesley was enjoying a new life chapter in sunny Florida. I was so excited about being here, kind of restarting the life, being someplace warm. <laughs> but just a few months after moving, she received some shocking news. After a routine mammogram, Doreen was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. It was a smack in the head. It was just not expected. Doreen's 25-year-old daughter, Madeline, had just finished business school in London and packed up to be by her mother's side. 
I really did not want her to come back. She was making a life for herself. I, of course, relished that she was here with me and, and helping me, but um, it was I was conflicted. I was really about to launch my career. I was in a relationship, but family at the end of the day was more important than all of that. For the next year, Madeline helped Doreen get through 16 rounds of chemotherapy, a double mastectomy, and six weeks of radiation. My mom is one of the toughest people that I know. She is um, so bold and brave. There were moments where, you know, she would be weak or there'd be moments where I would be afraid because I didn't know what was gonna happen to her. You wanna help them and you can't always help someone when they're in treatment. You can be there for them, but you can't take the pain away. 12 months after her life-changing diagnosis, Doreen was declared cancer-free in 2016. My mindset was, okay, it's gone. We're gonna get healthy and move on with life. Six years later, breast cancer would again be part of their lives. I got the news that I had cancer five days after my 32nd birthday. I did monthly self-checks because of my mom. And in the beginning of November of 2022, I found a lump. The immediate feeling is it's denial. It's like, this can't be happening. This can't be real. And then it, there's fear that kicks in. I got a call and the call was, mom, come, come. That's all she said. It was um, far more difficult to hear that she, she was diagnosed than, than to hear my own diagnosis. And that's mostly because I knew what she faced. You know, it, it wasn't an unknown. There was no question that I was gonna be there and care for her as she cared for me. She's my baby. I just kept thinking about, I'm so thankful for my life. I'm so thankful for the people in my life. I'm so thankful for the experiences that I've had, but I'm not done yet. This can't be it. Madeline was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, which required aggressive treatment. Because it was caught early, Madeline's doctor says she saved her own life. This past July, Madeline was declared cancer free. For us to hear that they had determined that she was cancer free was probably the best news of my life. In a lot of ways, I don't, I feel like I almost couldn't have done this without you. And so I'm forever thankful. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. Oh. <laughs> okay, there are mothers and daughters watching this show right now mm -hmm. who would dream about having a bond like the two of you had. I mean, and to imagine that something so scary was what ended up even bringing you closer than probably you ever imagined. How did your relationship evolve since then? It, it's at a deeper level. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we, we had a great relationship before, um, but cancer brought us to topics that we never would have explored mm -hmm. had, had we not been uh, gone through this together, both both her with me and me with her. So, yeah, it gave us, it gave us a deeper um, understanding of each other and um, an appreciation, I think, for um, each other as well. Mm -hmm. Mad Madeline, one of the things that's so breathtakingly beautiful mm -hmm. about this story is that you were in London, you were starting your career, mm -hmm you heard your your mom's diagnosis and you mm -hmm. flew home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You wanted to make sure you could dedicate your time to her. Mm -hmm. And then when you needed her, she mm -hmm. was there yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was that? What, what has that time been like for you? It's time with my mom that I never thought I would have had because, you know, you hope that something like this never happens. But when it does, you have to make the most of it. Mm -hmm. and. You can't wait until life is perfect to be happy and to spend time with family. And so that really kind of, it forced us in the best way to be there for each other. Madeline, I wanna ask you something about your mom because in every single picture that I saw, whether she was doing chemo or whether she was holding you or whether when you were a little girl, she always has the smile yes. on her face, no matter what or where. That must have been with her long before this journey. Tell us about your mom. She is the toughest person I know. Uh -huh. um, we actually went for dinner last night and we were talking about 
her raising me. She wanted to make sure that I knew I could do anything <laughs> I wanted to put my, my mind to and do it with a smile and, mm -hmm. you know, don't let people tell me no. Um, and so I kind of got that from from her. And so it's this like will to live and make the most out of life and to do it. And there's so joy happy. in the yeah, middle of all yeah. of this. I feel I felt it through the screen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, and, and you're cancer free. I'm cancer free. What are you free. looking forward to now? Mm -hmm. More life, <laughs> um, more life giving back. I think, you know, I loved my life before, yeah. before cancer, but now I just have such an appreciation for people that are going through it. and. Um, I get to do the things I used to love to do mm -hmm. and then also help others. Now to the amazing journey one graduate made with her mom and the accomplishment they both earned along the way. Take a look. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Rasha Ahmad. This is a moment 26-year-old Rasha Ahmad fought for. I am honored to have been chosen to speak on behalf of class 2023 that's her giving a speech at her recent graduation from William Patterson University in New Jersey. I was actually feeling proud representing my university, and speaking right in front of tons of people, knowing my story and what did I go through. What she went through was this. In 2014, she and her family were trapped in Syria as war raged around them. Her mother, Stani, remembers when she knew they had to leave. We had a very scary night when the start hearing the explosion sounds at 2 a.m. I said, no, 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 no. I can't stay anymore. Rasha and her mom applied for asylum here in the U.S., but the family had to leave behind Rasha's father so he could take care of his own dad. I left him. I left my house. I left all my memories there, so... I miss my house. Sorry. <laughs> but they made a life in the U.S. and Rasha worked full time to put herself through college. I am living a testimony that if given just an ounce of opportunity, you can do anything. But this isn't just a story about Rasha's American dream. Her mother was there that day too, not as a spectator, but as a fellow graduate. She helped me a lot. I'm so thankful God gave me this girl. I love you so much. I'm so proud that I have a mother like you, strong. A powerful achievement made all the more meaningful because of this. That's Rasha's father, there at the ceremony, the first time they'd seen him in eight years. My father is here. I'm not going to be worrying about nothing anymore. <laughs> a family reunited, having achieved so much together. Congratulations to class of 2023. I wish you continued success. And yes, we did it.
Welcome to the boost. Every day we pass people on the street or at a store and we do it without a glance. But what if you took a moment to just stop and talk? NBC Savannah Sellers chatted with someone who's found purpose and healing in doing just that. That's like my number one rule of life. You just never give up on it. That which gives you meaning, purpose, and love. There's nothing I can do to take away the diagnosis. This is not necessarily the kind of tumor that you can cure. The videos on TikTok are about love. It was like an immediate connection, and it still is. When I talk to him, I feel exactly the same as I did the night we met. Loss. Some people never know love. And for me, the closest thing to God was my, I'll cry, was my mother's love. And everything between. But as you get older, you realize that, you know, life is really, really short. And it's just easier to smile at somebody. People on TikTok unexpectedly sharing their deepest, most personal stories with someone they've never even met. I remember always, I don't know why I'm telling you this, you're a total stranger. I can't believe I'm having this conversation with you. The fact that these strangers can open up to me without ever knowing me, I think that's what floors me. 27-year-old Hunter Prosper of Pittsburgh is the stranger behind the camera. He's also an ICU nurse and says in 2020, he started losing his way amid the daily tragedy of the pandemic. I felt like I was so burnt out that I was losing um, passion for life. But he says he found healing in, of all places, TikTok. Tell me how you go from nurse to TikTok creator. The camera in itself and being able to talk into it, it just felt like I was giving myself therapy. So the first videos I ever made were me just talking about patient stories. And being able to talk about this, it like breathed new life into who I thought I was. Renewed, he began turning the camera around, striking up conversations with random people on the street. List off some of the questions that you ask people. So I think a lot of my popular ones are, uh, who was your first love and why did you fall in love with them? I was dying for that I was too shocked. If you don't mind me asking what happened after those four years? What's the most pain you felt that wasn't physical? My mom, she passed away in a nursing facility and it wasn't anything I could do about it. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? I've been using that one a lot lately. I see a girl who's trying. He says you'd be surprised at how willing people are to reveal their innermost feelings. One of my favorite moments is being able to ask a question and seeing it in the stranger's eyes that this is about to be therapy for them. And you can actually see someone react that way, you just can, on their I mean, face. You can almost feel it, it's palpable. The conversations can last up to an hour. I have a video where it started off and it was bright out, and by the end of it, it was like dark out. But Hunter edits them down into short videos that have gotten hundreds of millions of views. What do you hope that people take away from your videos? I hope they take away that everyone has a beautiful story, a beautiful book um, that they can call their life. So I really hope that these videos are able to make people stop and, uh, and really appreciate the people around them. All right, Hunter, who was your first love and why did you fall in love with them? <laughs> Savannah, you were catching, you were throwing me off with this. <laughs> That's a good question. Where'd you come up with that? <laughs> my first love is without a doubt my mom. And everything I am is because of her and everything I do is because of her. See, that's the kind of answer on the street if I asked somebody that and that's what they said, I'd be like, dang, <laughs> that was a good answer. Now here's a question for you. Have you ever felt the urge to bear your soul to a complete stranger? Well, that is the premise behind a podcast with millions of listeners giving people a chance to talk anonymously and proving to be therapeutic for the caller, the audience, and the host. Sandwich delivery for Mr. Oscar Martinez. Okay. You've seen him on The Office, Broad City, yes. and Space Force, but these days, comedian Chris Gethard is doing something a little more beautiful. It's beautiful anonymous, one hour, one phone call. No names, no holds barred. He hosts the podcast, Beautiful Stories from Anonymous People, also known as Beautiful Anonymous. How does it work? Basically, I tweet out a phone number. People try to call from all over the world. We patch one person through. There's very little screening. And then I talk to that person for an hour. The rules? Chris can't hang up, and the caller is always anonymous. Anybody in the world, call in, talk to me. Just don't tell me who you are. The anonymity is pretty crucial for a couple reasons. If I don't know who you are, then you can sort of tell me your secrets and nobody knows about it. The podcast started in 2016 and had 6.5 million downloads last year alone, expanding to live shows around the world and covering everything from mental health and family secrets to first-time confessions. And she's a little fighter. 
she's a she's a fighter for sure. In one episode, Love is Everywhere, a mother calls in from a hospital while waiting for an update on her daughter's cancer from the oncologist. Oh boy, this one got me. <laughs> Sorry. But the conversation does not always end when the phone call does, like in the case of the episode Gay Zombies Live from Edinburgh. What's your relationship with zombies now? Um, it's a, a sad one because they stopped making good zombie movies. <laughs> Callers typically maintain their anonymity, but you chose not to. Why? A really big part of it was Chris being so kind and saying like, hey, um, I think you should try this again. Jace Van Meteren, a filmmaker, tried and failed to crowdfund a zombie anthology movie series. He talked to Chris about his experience on the show and after the episode, revealed his identity. There's 100,000 people that listen to this show. If I can get 10% of them to give you a dollar, you got your 10 grand. This time, with the beautiful anonymous community behind him, Jace raised more than $16,000 and hopes to have the film by the end of the year. And the show's producers say the beautiful anonymous community provides emotional support, too. The show is like a dose of empathy. This is a podcast that helps you feel more connected. Gethard aiming to do just that one hour, one phone call, one episode at a time. Regular people living regular lives often have mind blowing stories to tell. And we don't slow down enough and ask each other about those. For Sunday Today, Zinclair Samoa, NBC News. I've got another fun story for you. You do not want to miss it. Coming up right after this. We've got one last story sure to keep that smile on your face all day long. Check it out. A toddler in California was excited to meet his baby sister for the very first time. He even got a chance to hold her, but he seemed a little confused when it came to the whole concept of swaddling. <laughs> Take a listen. Oh, well, your big brother. What do you think? It's your sister, Bert. Does it have any arms? <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, oh, now she, does, she doesn't have yeah, any arms. Yeah. There, there are no arms. Dad there talked about arms. how observant that little toddler is. They so say cute. got such a kick out of the comment, they used it as the birth announcement. Wow, that was a fun show, guys. I hope you guys are feeling as uplifted as I am, and you are ready to take on the day. We'll be back right here tomorrow with more uplifting stories on Today All Day. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and I know trends. Each week, I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Dovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick, and I love finding the best versions of everyday items in Better Basics. This is Shop All Day, Comfy Cozy. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. 
tis the season for cooler weather and a great excuse to get comfy and cozy. We're talking fleece line leggings, comfortable moccasins, and loungewear galore. And if this time of year has you craving a warm bath and a cup of hot tea, we have must-have items for you too. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. So let's get to it. First, when I want to de-stress before the holidays, you know what I love to do? Pull on a pair of irresistibly soft PJs and take a load off. And these satin takes on the classic men's style pajamas are the ultimate in stylish loungewear. They make me feel like I'm at a luxurious spa retreat that just happens to be in my own home. And I wish you could feel this fabric. It is so incredibly soft. It is like a satin poly blend that is the feel of silk, but not the price of silk, which we love. And I am always excited when I see a great looking pair of classic men's style pajamas. This set comes in two pieces. It's got the button down top and the pull on pant, which has an elastic waistband, so they're roomy, but I also love all of these high-end details. So we've got the classic notch collar, we've got the contrast piping, we have the wonderful pocket here, and of course, all these great little cuff details. Everything you look for in a great classic men's PJ. And they come in so many different colors and patterns. Check out the navy stripe. Have you ever seen anything chicer? And I have to say that the pajama trend has actually been a big trend on the runways too. We've seen lots of designers creating looks that are not just meant to be worn for lounging, that resemble pajamas. And these would make a great gift for anyone on your list if you're planning ahead. So now let's talk knits. We're always on the hunt for a sweater that is over the top soft and we hit the jackpot with the cozy up rib sweater from Aerie. Yep, it's a 10 out of 10. And this little sweater here, oh, it is so incredibly soft as well. And it's actually made with Aerie's softest yarn yet, which is really saying something. And it's actually a stretch yarn. So this knit, the sweater, it's stretch, which makes it even more comfortable to wear. And I really like the silhouette. I mean, it's a little oversized. It's got a drop sleeve here and it's tunic length, which I love. Gives you a little bit more coverage when you're wearing leggings or your skinny jeans. And it's also got a lot of high-end details. This exposed seams, and I also like the little notch here on the hem. So these sweaters come in eight different colors and they are such a great deal. When it gets cold outside, we need a legging that will rise to the challenge. And these popular fleece line leggings are not just comfy, but so warm and cozy. And these are the legging you will reach for again and again this winter. And what I like so much about these leggings is they're super duper versatile. So they're great for all your outdoor activities or for working out, but they're also comfortable enough that you can hang out on the couch or run around doing your errands. And these leggings are incredibly popular. They have over 15,000 ratings. And what shoppers love so much about these leggings is they are so warm. They're lined with a low pile fleece and they're insulating. But the good news is they're also really flattering, which you can't say about every you know, fleece line legging out there. They're made with a fabric that has a four way stretch. I mean, check that out and 13% spandex. So they suck you in a little bit, but they're still comfy enough that you can hang out on the couch in these. And another thing that shoppers love so much about them is that they have pockets. Ah, oh, you can put your phone in there. They also have a hidden pocket at the waist that you can hide your key in. And the cut is super flattering, high-waisted. So no muffin top, ladies. You gotta love that. And they come in 17 different colors and are incredibly affordable. And now that we're getting comfy, let's take an even deeper dive into cozy. We've got the best-selling shearling slippers from heritage brand LL Bean for the whole family that aren't just good, 
They're wicked good. No, really, that's their name. And these moccasins are also wicked popular. The brand says that they've sold over 4 million pair over the past five years. And in December, their peak month, they say they sell one pair every seven seconds. So that's pretty popular. And here's a fun fact, shearling is actually moisture wicking. So no sweaty feet. You gotta love that, right? And I also love that they have a great rubber sole. So technically you could wear these inside or out. Now here's what I think sends these moccasins over the edge for me. They make them for the entire family from the littlest toddler to adults and check it out. You can do a mommy and me or a daddy and me or a whole family moccasin situation. And they come in lots of colors and cute patterns like plaid. These are such a winner. We all need a sock that's got your back by way of your feet. These dreamy, super soft, cozy chenille socks by Ugg are the ultimate in comfort. They're like a magical instant relaxation device. You put them on and instantly your feet are enveloped with a soothing softness that begs you to put your feet up. And I know that you guys know the Ugg boot, but did you know that Ugg makes socks that are just as comfortable? So these are made with a chenille thread. They're knit in a confetti pattern. And what's so great about these socks is you can wear them all year long instead of slippers. But if you want to carry that dreaminess around with you throughout the day, you can also wear these socks with your winter boots. And these socks come in seven different colors. And these are a sock that's going to give back. So what could be more comfy and cozy than a chill pill? <gasps> chill pill bath bomb, that is. These fizzy adult bath bombs from beloved beauty brand Way just might inspire you to take a little well-deserved me time and time to recharge. How cute is this little concept, right? The chill pill. So the obsession is real with these chill pills. They are so luxurious. I mean, they really do make you feel like you're getting away on a fabulous spa retreat. And this brand was actually founded by Jen Atkin, who's a celebrity hairstylist. You met her on our show a couple of months ago. And what people love so much about about these chill pills. These are so easy to use. All you do is snap and sink into a warm tub and get ready to relax. So these not only help to cleanse, but they also help to moisturize. They're infused with jojoba oil. They're infused with saffler oil, hemp oil, and they really do encourage you to get a little zen. And lastly, just when you thought it couldn't get any cozier, we couldn't help ourselves from sharing a very modern take on some of the plushest loungewear you've ever seen or felt. So this is the Skims Teddy Collection. And yes, you guys have heard of Skims. It's Kim Kardashian West's line, and it is really an innovative line. I am so excited about sort of the twist they've done on that teddy trend. So normally we think of the teddy fleece as maybe an outdoor outerwear fabric, but this brand has taken the texture of Teddy and made it so incredibly soft. You just want to snuggle up in it, and that's what people do, of course. And what's also really cool about this brand, they've taken that whole concept of loungewear, and they've really modernized it with the silhouettes. We've got a full-length zip-up jacket, but we've also got this wonderful crop jacket that zip up. They also have wonderful silhouettes for bottoms, like the great wide-leg track pant that are just as cozy as they are fashionable. And one of my absolute favorite things about this collection, and Skims in general, is that they've really pioneered, along with Yeezy, the whole new nude trend, the new neutral. And I think all of these wonderful nude colors are based on beautiful skin tones, and they feel so modern. So this truly is a very fashion-forward way to do loungewear. So let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Women's Classic Pajama Set, the Airy Cozy Up Rib Sweater, the Thermal Leggings, the L.L. Bean Wicked Good Moccasins for men, women, and kids, the Ugg Socks, the Way Chill Pills, and the Skims Teddy Collection. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. 
That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Mako and Lohu is talking style and comfort. And later, Jen Fallick has plush robes and bath caddies. Sign me up. Don't go away. Welcome back, I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Okay, I am so excited to chat with fashion expert Melissa Garcia because even when you are comfy cozy, it doesn't mean you can't be stylish while relaxing. Hi, Melissa. So good to have you here. Oh, it's so, so good to be here with you guys. I so enjoy seeing you and being here. And of course, we're going to talk about amazing cozy stuff. So what better than that? All right, let's talk about it. So now that the weather is getting cooler, Melissa, what are some of your favorite ways to get your comfy, cozy vibes on? It's funny because I'm not a big fan of the colds. I don't, are you? I mean, I usually like warm weather. You the same? Same. Yeah, but there's something really special about like just staying home and putting on like cozy PJs and getting by the fire on your couch and just getting like warm and cozy. So I do love that part of it. I do too. And I have to be honest, when I'm at home and I'm comfy cozy, I look a hot mess. So what is <laughs> what are some ways to get your comfy cozy vibes on but while still looking stylish? So listen, and I'll be, I'm, I'm a fashionista, so okay. I'm the first to say fashion is important. However, I think there's an exception. When you're home and you want to be cozy and comfy, I think all rules go out the door. Wear whatever you want and just be warm and comfy and cozy. So I'm putting that out there. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's get started with the first item, which by the way, I'm so glad you brought all these picks for us. It's actually called the Comfy. Yes, so this goes along the lines of what I was just saying. There's sometimes you have to sacrifice fashion for comfort and warmth, and this is absolutely one of those times. It's the best $45 you'll ever probably spend. My entire family has one of these. So they are ginormous. They're one size fits all. 
They are the coziest, yummiest. The inside is like this yummy, warm Sherpa. And it's like this huge blanket that you oh. wear. It is incredible. I'm telling you, myself, my husband, we all have our own. And you'll find us on the couch, snuggled up in this, nice and toasty, warm. It's amazing. I am obsessed with the fact that you have the color black. Because listen, I mean, I know it's machine washable, but after I'm comfy and cozy, I'm not going to throw it in the machine after every wash. No. <laughs> so I love that. And it's one size fits all as well. Okay, let's move on to the next item, which by the way is this beanie, which has the word cozy in its title. How cool is that? I know, and it is the coziest, comfiest beanie. You know, when your head is warm, it really maintains so much of your body temperature and your heat. But this one is really special because again, fashion is my wheelhouse and not all beanies are the same. I have to say they all might look the same, but they don't all fit the same. And this one not only is really comfortable and cozy, has that cute pom-pom on the top, but it's also an incredible fit. It fits your head perfectly. It's not too thick and chunky. There's not too much extra fabric on top that kind of flops around. It's really the perfect fit. And I love that they have the perfect neutral colors to choose from, whites, grays, tans, beiges, like mm -hmm. black, of course. Those are the colors you really want. And of course, we don't always want to do our hair. A beanie is the perfect thing to throw on when you want to look pulled together, so but you don't have time. That's so true. Listen, we do comfy and cozy at home, but like if you're going out to a football game, it's the perfect thing to cover up like a bad hair day or just like when you have your hair down. Love it. Let's move on to the pajamas, the flannel pajamas. So cool. Tell me about them. So I love a great pair of flannel pajamas, and these are like the ultimate in flannel pajamas. I think when we all really think about flannel PJs, L.L. Bean automatically comes to mind, and there's a reason why. It's because they're the highest quality flannel. They're made of Portuguese flannel. They have a ton of color options. They're so super soft. They're they're warm, but they're not too thick that you're going to overheat in them. I love them. They're great. A perfect piece of clothing to add into your sort of cozy repertoire this season. And also a great gift for yourself or someone you love. I was just thinking about that, that I might gift them either to my sister or my husband. Is it cheesy? Is it not stylish that I want us to match together for the holidays? I love that. I think it's adorable. Listen, again, all rules go out the door of the holidays. Wear whatever you want. Match, match your dog, match everyone. <laughs> match everyone. Okay, you said all rules everyone. go out of the door, but my number one rule for just relaxing at home and getting really, really cozy is I gotta have hot chocolate. Let's talk about this pic. I mean, it's just so cozy. Oh my gosh, a girl after my heart. I am a chocolate fanatic. It's a problem. And <laughs> this hot cocoa is next level hot cocoa. Because normally you're used to those powdered hot cocos, right? Right. But when you open this one up and you see it, it's actual chocolate oh. shaving. The only thing that's missing is a marshmallow on top. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. I am all set for my night in. Oh my God, I wish I had one too. Mm -hmm. we <laughs> take a sip for me. <laughs> I'll take an extra sip for you. Thanks, Melissa. Those were great tips. Now let's run through all the products one more time. The Comfy, the Abercrombie and Fitch Cozy Palm Beanie, the L.L. Bean flannel pajamas, and the William Sonoma hot chocolate. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Jim Fallick has plush robes and all you need for a cozy night in in the cool season. Don't go away.
everyone. Welcome back to Shop All Day. I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick. This episode has been all about getting comfy and cozy, and I have the latest must-have items to create the calm before the holiday storm at home. From plush robes to a bath caddy that will make your bath feel more like a spa. And see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. So let's get to it. We're gonna start with the ultimate symbol of comfy, cozy season, and that is a good, soft throw. This one is a personal favorite. This is the throw that my family, we fight over it every night. It's a luxury throw, comes in 43 colors and three different sizes. The reason that we love this one so much is there's nothing softer. There's different versions, so you can get one that's dual-sided with Sherpa and fur. This one is dual-sided with Sherpa and shag. This is my personal favorite one. So it's somehow really light, but also just feels warm and cozy. You can bundle yourself up in it. You can choose which side you want. If you want to go with the Sherpa side, you want to go with the shag side or faux fur. And it also gives you styling options. If you want it to look a little dressier, you can choose one side versus in a room that feels a little more casual, you can flip it onto the other. Also, they're machine washable. We use these every single day, so it's wonderful to know that I can just throw them in the washer dryer and have a fresh one every night. Now, once you're snuggled up in this, trust me, you're not gonna wanna get out of it. Once I'm bundled up in my blanket, the last thing I wanna do is get up, run to the kitchen, do other things like that. So, I am obsessed with this next product. These tea drops are the best way to get a perfect cup of tea every single time with zero effort. You take this drop right here, and see it's already made for you. Drop it right into your cup of tea. You can use it for iced tea too. The brand says that all the ingredients in these tea drops are finely sourced. There's organic elements, there's spices, there's fine sugars from all over the globe. So you're getting a delicious cup of tea with top of the line ingredients. But now that we're talking comfy cozy, I like to think of it in a cup of warm water, drop it in, let it dissolve, and minutes later, you have the perfect cup of tea and you don't have to get up and Throw out a tea bag. You don't have to worry if you have the right infuser tool. There's different versions too. You can go with sweetened or unsweetened. And there's flavors like blueberry acai. There's a rose earl gray. My daughter loves the citrus ginger because that has no caffeine. It also says on the package, it gives you an indication of if it's caffeinated, if it's not, and if it is caffeinated, how caffeinated it is. Very helpful for me when I'm trying to dole out tea every night to my kids. Moving on to screen-free serenity. You know, a lot of us already know that coloring is a great way to mentally unwind. It's definitely trending, and it is not just for kids. It is such a great, comfy, cozy indoor activity for those chilly fall and winter nights. And this coloring book, I personally use. I love it. My kids keep stealing it from me. It is a total win. It's the Bando Brighten Up Coloring Book. And the reason that this is so amazing for adults is that the designs in it are sourced from 12 different artists from all over the globe. And they're actually drawings that even if you're not naturally an artist, when you color them in, it looks professional. And it's not just fridge worthy. These puppies are frame worthy. I love the designs in here. Side note, they're best used with either crayons or colored pencils because you don't want the color to bleed through the page. The sheets can be torn off, so if you're hanging out with friends or if other people want to color, if you want to put it up, you can easily tear off the perforated pages. And it's just such a relaxing, screen-free way to unwind, to let your mind relax, and to sort of embrace your inner child and your inner creativity without having to worry about coloring inside the lines. Some like coloring books, others prefer a warm bath to unwind. And if you want to take a warm bath, you're gonna need this Amazon bath caddy. I get really antsy in the bath. I know you're supposed to soak for a certain number of minutes. Everyone says, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. After three minutes, I'm itching to get out and see what else I need to get done. What's great about this bath caddy is that you can have everything that you need to keep yourself occupied in the tub right at arm's reach. You can put a book down, you can put your iPad there if you wanna watch something on the screen. There's a spot for a cup of tea or coffee. You can even put a glass of wine. There's a little ledge for a candle. So it really has room for everything that you may need once you get in the tub and you don't wanna get out to get. It allows you to sit, soak, and relax for as long as you'd like. This one is better basic worthy because it's adjustable. So no matter the size of your tub, this typically can fit multitude of sizes and it's bamboo, so it's high quality and lightweight, but it's covered in a waterproof varnish. So even if it gets a little bit wet, no harm, no foul. 
If you wanna take your serene soak to the next level, you need a bath fizzer to go along with your bath caddy. This one is from Uncommon Goods, and look at these, they look like little rock candies. I mean, they look delicious, and they smell amazing. What I love about the bath fizzers, it's sort of like an upgraded new version of a traditional bath bomb. You just take it, swirl it around in the tub when you've got them filled with warm water. It fizzes up into the most delicious smelling fizzy bath. I've been trying them all. I love the lemon scented one. And it just takes the whole bath experience to the next level. Plus, if you're thinking of gifting, this is a great gift because most people don't have this. The bath fizzer is a really new and interesting way to take your bath to the next level. So now that you've had your bath, you need the plush robe. After a bath, you really want to be extra comfy, extra cozy, wrap yourself up in this. This is from Target. It's the Women's Cozy Plush Robe, and uh, it's the softest thing ever. I love this brand, actually. It's from Stars Above. This brand is my go-to for pajamas, because with their pajamas, I find that they're really soft and comfy, but they never feel heavy. And the robe is the exact same thing. It feels so plush and soft, but it doesn't feel like it weighs you down. It doesn't make you feel uncomfortably hot. The style, of course, the classic with the shawl, the wrap so you can give yourself a little tie, and the key, you have gotta have pockets. This has two really great deep pockets. Put this on after the bath, put your remote in one pocket, your uh, snack or your phone in the other, and you are good to go. There's four different colors to choose from, and I just love this soft velvety finish. So now that you are all relaxed and you're comfy cozy as can be, Let's talk about the one thing that you need to get comfy cozy the second you get into bed and fall off into an amazing night of sleep. This is the Nod Pod. If you have never seen the Nod Pod before, you've got to get familiar with this thing. This basically is like a weighted blanket, but for your eyes. It has just a little bit of weight to it, so when you put it on, it sinks right onto your face. It blocks out all the light, making it easier to fall asleep and it's dual-sided, so you've got a sort of warm side and a cool side. If you want something a little cooling, you want something a little toasty, you can even put this in the fridge or warm it up in the microwave to give it a little extra boost. The kicker with this, what makes it so interesting, is that the way it ties in the back, it doesn't create a lump. It lays totally flat, so if you want to lay back and just chill, this isn't going to give you that uncomfortable bump. There's a lot of fun colors to choose from too. And when it comes to ending your comfy, cozy night on the perfect note, this is gonna win every single time. Let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the Luxury Throw Blanket, the Tea Drop from Uncommon Goods, the Bandeau Brighten Up Coloring Book, the Bath Caddy, the Uncommon Goods Rock Candy Bath Fizzer, the Target Women's Cozy Plush Robe, and the Nod Pot. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on all of your better basics and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop All Day. Say there today all day. Are you looking to ditch some dairy? Well, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Samadata remaking two classically creamy dishes without the cream. First up, she's going to make a vegan mac and cheese with a velvety sauce. Then for dessert, Sama turns overripe bananas into a luscious, dairy-free, nice cream. Can you imagine if they started making, like, onion-scented candles? That would be such a crazy choice. I'd probably buy one. If you can't eat dairy, then don't worry, I got you. I'm always coming up with new ways to make creative, delicious dips, fillings, and desserts without any of the dairy. I really just want to hashtag make dairy free cool. I'm going to show you how to make two of my favorite recipes that are traditionally loaded with lots of cheese and milk. First up, my masala mac and cheese, and next, because we can never forget dessert, my banana cardamom ice cream. One of the first ways that I dabbled into cooking, and maybe it's a bit generous to say cooking, was through boxed mac and cheese. I used to love that mildly suspect bright orange powder. 
But today, we are making my masala mac and cheese. The flavor profile is a little bit more elevated, but still just as creamy and decadent. Let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is dice up my onion. So I wanted to add some cooked onions into the sauce because I think it adds a lot more flavor. We want different levels of flavor and spice, and by cooking these onions down in some olive oil, it's really gonna get us there. I'm gonna peel this guy. I am just dicing my onion. Right there. Little rough, don't worry, because we are going to blend it later. After it's been cooked, of course. I've just diced my onions, and now I'm just gonna heat up some olive oil on my pan. Okay, my olive oil is shimmering, time to add my onions. I also wanna make sure I'm seasoning my onions with some salt and pepper. A little salt and some freshly ground black pepper. Okay, these onions look delicious. They look nice and golden brown. I'm gonna turn my stove off, set these aside to cool, and get to work on my creamy sauce. Before we get going on my sauce, I have to tell you about cashews. When you soak cashews, they absorb a lot of that water, expanding them and making them a lot easier to blend. Because they're so buttery, when you actually do blend them after they've been soaked, they can create creamy dips, dressing, sauces, desserts, mac and cheese sauce, anything, you name it. But if you skip soaking them, and please don't, you'll get a really crumbly and mealy sauce, and that's just not cute. It's really important that you soak your cashews for at least 24 hours overnight, or you can flash soak them for an hour in hot water. Best part about this mac and cheese is it comes together in this blender. What could be better? Mac and cheese in a blender? I'm on board. We're gonna add our cashews into our blender. Make sure when you're making this recipe that you only use raw cashews. No salt on it, no roasting. Because I want a little bit of a sweet taste and I want that nice orange color for this mac and cheese, I'm using a roasted sweet potato. I'm just gonna peel the skin off with my hands. By the way, if you're worried that I'm handling a hot potato, I'm not. This has been cooled. Don't worry about me. I'm okay. I'm just gonna take about half of this, pop it in my blender. You thought I forgot about my onions? You were wrong. They're going straight in here. Now to get that really delicious, cheesy, savory flavor, I'm using some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a really common vegan cheese replacement. Adding this straight in my blender. It adds a bit of umami as well. Now for my spices. This is a masala mac and cheese after all. Got some cumin. Adding a bit of cayenne. Cayenne gives me that heat. I want a little bit of spice in this masala mac. I'm gonna add some turmeric. Turmeric is not only delicious, but it also adds that really gorgeous yellow color that we're chasing for this mac and cheese. And finally, we've got some garlic powder. To help everything blend together, I've got some vegetable broth. Veggie broth is also a bit better than adding something like water because it's got a little bit more flavor in there. Okay, are you ready to blend? Okay, let's do it. And if you need to, feel free to scrape down the sides of the blender to get everything well incorporated. Boom. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt, a little more pepper. Back to blending we go. Okay, I'm really pleased to announce that my mac and cheese sauce is done. Looks amazing. Time to make our pasta. Got my cute little elbows here. My water is boiling. Don't forget, please, please don't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? I'm gonna do that right now. Pasta water is salted. It's time for our pasta. So I am using elbows here for my little cute pasta shape. I wanted to get that very iconic mac and cheese vibe, but you can totally use whatever short pasta works for you. A shell would be nice here, penne would be nice here. Okay, so I'm just gonna fish for a piece, see how we're doing on doneness. This is the best way to check. Just pinch it with your fingers or just bite into it. Perfect. Our pasta is ready. Time to drain. Don't drop the sama. <laughs> Don't drop it. 
One more thing to do is just add our sauce to our pasta. I'm gonna add this into my bowl. I'm really excited about this sauce. Just so you know, this makes a lot of sauce. I like a saucy mac, but you can totally reserve some for later if you want it to be a little less saucy. All right, time to plate. <sighs> Sorry, I just gasped. I was just taken aback. It's so creamy. All right, little fresh parsley just to top. Little bit of color, little bit of green, little bit of herb just to bring this out. And then I'm just gonna finish it with some freshly ground black pepper. Have you ever seen a more velvety mac and cheese? I just have to capture this. Here I go. <sighs> this is gonna be an action shot. Okay, I think I got it. Time for me to dig in. I've never been more happy than this moment right now. <laughs> there's so much flavor going on, and it's so creamy. You would not believe there's no dairy in this. I'm not telling you to throw away your box mac and cheese, but um, I'm definitely telling you to give this a try. You will not regret it. Mmm. So good. It's me, and I can never have any dinner or lunch without a little bit of dessert. So up next, I've got my banana cardamom ice cream, and you're absolutely gonna love it. I'm gonna grab the ingredients. If you thought that you needed an ice cream maker to make ice cream at home, then think again. My banana cardamom ice cream comes together in a blender and takes a little nice nap in the freezer to create the most luscious vegan ice cream. Let's make it. Listen closely. I hate wasting bananas. It's so sad. Ripe bananas, really spotty bananas, are perfect for so many different types of recipes and especially this ice cream. They help create that really luscious, creamy texture without any of the dairy. I've got my frozen bananas here. I'm just gonna pop them into my blender. When I freeze bananas, I like to cut them up in little pieces just to make it easier to blend. Really important that you're using ripe frozen bananas because we're not actually gonna add any added sugar to this recipe. All the sweetness is gonna come straight from those bananas. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of creamy almond butter into my blender. Because the bananas are super sweet, I like adding a nut butter like an almond or even a peanut butter just to balance out that sweetness. I love using cardamom in this ice cream because it's got this really nice piney, fruity undertone. Really delicious. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can totally sub cinnamon instead. Now to help everything come together, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk. Here's the important thing. We're not trying to go for a smoothie here, right? So we're just gonna add a little bit of milk just to get the blender going. Time to blend. Time to scrape down the sides of the blender. 
I'd rather scrape down the size of the blender a million times to get that really creamy, thick, almost soft serve consistency ice cream rather than add too much almond milk and be left with a smoothie. Can we just take a moment for my blender, please? It literally does the absolute most for me. It's key when I'm creating all of my delicious dairy-free recipes. Okay, I think we made it. I could eat this now, and you could too, but I do want a little bit of an ice cream scoopable consistency, so that's why I'm transferring it to the freezer. Okay, ice cream is in my container safely. It's ready for the freezer for an hour or more. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but patience is key here. Let's do it. My ice cream is done. A little patience gets us a very long way. I am just gonna cut some strawberries to top my ice cream with and then I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> no, I did not just sneak a strawberry. I have been waiting for a long time for my dessert, so it is time to scoop my ice cream. I'm very excited. <sighs> I just gasped <laughs> yet again. Oh, you thought I was a single scoop girl? Think again. <laughs> Oh, you thought I was a double scoop girl? Think once more. Time to top with some of my strawberries, just for some color, just for some freshness. I would say this looks too pretty to eat, but I'm for sure gonna eat it. I will take a picture though. Okay, I'm ready to taste. It is crazy that you can make something this creamy with frozen bananas. It's crazy, it's wild. The bananas are so sweet and we've got that almond butter to balance it out and that cardamom brings all the flavors to life. The next time you're craving something super creamy and delicious but you can't have dairy, look, there's options for you. These are so easy to make. I made so many of my dairy-free recipes in my blender Easy to whip up, just as decadent, just as creamy and delicious without the dairy. Hold me back. I am going in again. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. This is seriously so good. It's like, 
the sweetness is perfect. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's like my little Goldilocks sweetness. Mm. It's so good. Mm. Who doesn't love a muffin? As for me, whenever I enter any bakery or cafe, my eyes go directly to the muffins. I am obsessed. Am I the hashtag muffin woman? I don't know, that's a question for another day. But I've always wanted to create my favorite bakery style muffins at home. So after a little testing, I came up with two that are always on rotation for me. First up, a blueberry muffin just sweetened with some honey and lemon poppy seed muffin tops with a cute lemon cashew glaze. I always bake with chocolate over fruit. That's typically my MO. But I will say, I always make a little exception when it comes to a blueberry muffin. They're just my favorite staple comfort baked goods. But I was thinking, why should I go to a bakery when I can make one in my own kitchen? So let's get started. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I've lined my little muffin tin with these cute muffin liners. They're so cute. Now I can start on my wet ingredients. First up, I've got one egg. Just cracked my egg in here. Gonna whisk it really well. I want no separation between the yolk and the whites. This looks nice and uniform. Now, I'm gonna add in my almond butter. I find that the almond butter kind of adds a really nice nuttiness to these muffins. It's so delicious. Gonna mix my egg and my almond butter together really nicely so it's well incorporated. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and add my melted and cooled coconut oil. This is gonna serve as a nice butter replacement. Okay, and now, I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract. And for my star, I cannot have my honey blueberry muffins without the honey. That would simply be wrong. I like to use local honey for these muffins especially because it's such an important flavor component. I really wanna use the good stuff. And finally, I want a little touch of acidity just to bring out all of those flavors. So I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh lemon juice. Perfect. Mix the lemon juice in there, it smells so good. Okay, my wet ingredients look perfect. They're well incorporated, they're well mixed, which means it's time for me to move on to my dry ingredients. I'm using almond flour for this recipe, which is honestly my favorite flour to bake with. It's super cakey and dense, so it creates a really nice texture in these muffins. I'm gonna add some baking powder and a little pinch of salt, just a little, perfect. Now I'm just gonna whisk my dry ingredients together and make sure everything's well incorporated. You know what time it is. <laughs> it's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients. We want an even, even muffin batter. It smells so good already. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk to help everything come together a bit better. This is looking great. Now, this is a blueberry muffin. So I've got my gorgeous fresh blueberries here. Just proceed with caution when you're folding your blueberries into the batter. We don't want them to burst. They're precious, they're delicate. Just like, be careful of their feelings, okay? Okay. We look nice and well incorporated here. So, it's time for me to add them into my muffin tin. I like using a cookie scoop for cookies, for muffins, because it allows me to just capture even amounts of batter per muffin tin, per cookie. Makes it really consistent. And then you get a nice even bake too. Perfect. All right, so all that's left to do is bake them. They're going in the oven 30 to 35 minutes. I'm really excited to see them on the other end of this. Um, should I open a bakery? Just wondering. They look so cute. I have let them cool for 15 minutes, which means that it's definitely time for me to eat them. Okay, let's take a look. I mean, come on. They look so good. Before I dive into these, okay, I'm gonna have to take a picture. I'm trying to start my own bakery. I gotta have some documentation of this moment. Pretty iconic stuff, I have to say. 
I think it's time for me to try them. I think I've waited long enough. Here's a question. Do you bite into your muffin or do you rip a piece off? I'm gonna be dainty today and rip a little piece off. Here I go. Okay, oh, almost lost a blueberry. Hmm, it's crazy how well the blueberries and the honey go together. Mm. It's so good. Speaking of muffins, if you only eat the muffin tops, don't worry, I'm not judging you. In fact, my next recipe is for you because I'm gonna be making my lemon poppy seed muffin tops. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. You and I both know that we are kind of only here for the muffin tops, or at least that's my favorite part of the muffin. So for my next recipe, I thought I would whip up a lemon poppy seed muffin top with a lemon cashew glaze to satisfy all of you muffin top lovers out there. And I know you're out there. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and because I love being prepared, I have lined my pan with parchment paper and now I get to work on my wet ingredients. All right, I'm gonna crack two eggs. Now I'm gonna add in my melted and cooled coconut oil. All right, whisking that nicely. I'm using maple syrup and coconut sugar to sweeten these muffin tops. They're my two favorite sweeteners. They add a really nice robust taste, especially when paired together. Adding my maple syrup. Reminds me of pancakes and waffles, but it's kind of better in a muffin. This is a lemon poppy seed muffin top, which means we can't make it without the lemons, right? First, I'm gonna zest some lemons. I love using the lemon zest. It really amplifies that lemon flavor in these muffin tops. Now, I'm gonna juice my lemons. Because I love precision, <laughs> I'm gonna juice my lemons straight into this measuring cup so I know exactly how much I'm using. Okay, we've got our lemon juice, and now we're just gonna add it straight into the rest of our wet ingredients. Mix that up really nicely. And for one more layer of our sweetness, I'm gonna add some coconut sugar. Super warm, it's rich, it's golden. All right, our dry ingredients, very important. Just as important as our wet ingredients. Here, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. I find that almond flour is pretty dense. The only ingredient is almonds. And with oats, it's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna add some baking powder, a little pinch of salt to bring out all of that sweetness. Just a little. I'm gonna whisk this together. Just for a little something extra, I'm gonna add in some rolled oats. I find that this gives a lot of texture. It's really nice to have in these muffin tops. And because I'm really trying to recreate that iconic lemon poppy seed muffin, we have to have our poppy seeds. Okay, this looks really nice. It's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients. And add this in, perfect. Just gonna fold everything in super gently. Okay. This looks perfect. Time to use my giant cookie scoop and scoop these onto my pan. 
I like using these because it allows me to get a really nice uniform muffin top. So they're all even, they're all the same size. You know what's really great about a muffin top? You don't need a muffin tin to make them. Just use your cookie sheet. It's a game changer. These are ready for a little journey in the oven, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown around the edges. Let's go. I've let my muffins cool for about 20 minutes and you know what they need. You know what they're ready for? A little glaze. I'm gonna just preface this for you. I just wanna tell you that this glaze is kind of like a cross between a glaze and a frosting. So I do tend to call it a glosting. And I know I made that word up and I'm honestly pretty proud of myself for it. So let's make our glosting. To make this really creamy, delicious glaze slash frosting, AKA glosting, we are going to be using some cashews. I've soaked these cashews and when you soak them, it actually allows them to absorb that liquid and become really nice and tender and plump. This is gonna be the perfect thing to just blitz up in our blender because it's gonna be really luscious and smooth. I drained the water from my soaked cashews and I'm just gonna pop them in my blender. To complement that gorgeous lemon flavor in our lemon poppy seed muffin tops, I'm going to add some lemon juice into my blender, into my glossing. Now, to sweeten this up, I'm going to add some maple syrup. Time for a little oat milk. Finally, to bring out all of those flavors, balance everything out, a little pinch of salt. Now I'm just going to blend this up. Look at this gorgeous glossing. All right, we're ready to put this glaze on. Let me give you some options because we love options. You can do a little drizzle like this. It's so pretty. It's so thick and creamy. Do a little delicate, unfussy drizzle. Or if you want to really commit, you can just gloss that whole thing. Don't be shy. Getting it to really fall over the sides like that. It's really good. One last thing to really finish it off, seal the deal, a little extra poppy seed garnish. Those poppy seeds add some nice nuttiness. Gotta take a picture. I mean, <laughs> that frosting, it like, who gave the frosting permission to do that right there? It's almost unfair. Now it's my time to eat. My turn to eat. Pretty, right? Okay, I'm ready. You know what's the worst thing in a lemon baked good? Not enough lemon. This is so tart, perfectly sweet. I have no rules for myself. <laughs> mm. 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 I don't know, I feel like I've found a new calling in life and I think it might be to open a muffin store. We'll have plenty of muffin tops, plenty of regular muffins. I hope this inspired you to make muffins at home. I mean, this is so easy to make. The frosting slash glossing, also very easy. I just hope you never go without a muffin again in your own home. Hey guys, welcome to The Boost. To kick things off, we teamed up with actress Jennifer Garner to spotlight heroes and young students in a part of Kentucky that is still rebuilding more than a year after those historic floods. NBC's Cynthia McFadden joined Garner in Perry County to share more about the work Save the Children is doing to improve the lives of those impacted by that disaster. It just takes your breath away. This used to be the site of the Robinson Elementary School. But this means childhood to so many so many generations of kids and it's just gone. It's rubble. Last year, Jennifer Garner and I got a look inside after devastating flash flooding brought eight feet of water crashing into the building. Wow. The school and its beloved library were completely destroyed. My little elementary school library totally shaped my life. This was the school's library before the flooding, created in part by Save the Children. This is now the library a rolling cart pushed through the halls of a makeshift building. Hey guys. 
Librarian Antoinette Vermillion navigates through crowded hallways where more than 500 students from Robinson and Buckhorn, another flood-damaged school, have been crammed together for more than a year. In a place where one in three children lives below the poverty line and books can be hard to come by, the loss of the library was devastating. It was their escape. It's what I call the heart of the school. The heart of the school. It was all taken away. But you yep. go on. Yep, like we always do. You know, I think sometimes people who don't live in rural America see the challenges but not the strength. Right. The children are resilient. But that doesn't mean they aren't hurting. The kids here didn't just lose their school. More than 100 of them had to flee their homes. It's pain that hasn't gone away. The first time that it rained here, it was very chaotic, I'm not going to lie. We had kids crying, screaming, wanting to call their moms. It just brings back everything from that night. Michelle Stacy is a learning specialist at Robinson. What percentage of the kids went through trauma? I would say 100% of these kids are traumatized because they lost their school. You can't learn if you're traumatized, right? We get stressed out sometimes, don't we, babe? Which is why she agreed to help pioneer a Save the Children program called Bridges, designed to give kids a safe place to process their feelings. We saw it in action. Brave and strong, brave and strong. They need to be able to say, I'm not doing okay. This week, a special visitor. And on this farm, he had a a dragon. A rabbit. Oh, a rabbit. Okay. All right. E I E I O. Garner says she was delighted by what she saw. There's a lot of trauma just in growing up below the poverty line, and. Um, if you can name it, then you can heal and you can be resilient and move on. And it's amazing. It's amazing to watch in action. You've talked about how libraries changed your life. Mm -hmm. And now seeing that the library is this little push cart. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that hurts your heart, I know. Children's libraries are some of the most important places in our country. But you know what? A push cart? is better than nothing. A push cart with an amazing librarian like we met today, who's prioritizing reading, who's showing the kids that it matters enough that she will push a cart around to make sure they have some books. They're on their way back. Is there, is there one moment from today that you'll take home with you? The kids' faces turned when we started talking about the floods. They wanted me to know how scary it was what it was like to lose their school, what it was like to lose their homes, where their family went. Between the pandemic and the flooding, these third graders have never had a normal school year. It's a real worry for Principal Jamie Fugit. We have some students uh, that are not reading on grade level. We're working one-on-one -on -one with them 30 minutes a day for five days a week. You know, uh, we, we may lose a couple battles, but we're winning some too. But while these students wait for a new school and a new library, one thing there's no shortage of, love, hugs, are everywhere. There's magic that goes on in, in, in these small town schools. I know 100% of our students. I know 99% of my parents. And these, these, these staff members, they, 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 really, they really, really work hard. These children, they need every right to succeed just like everyone else does. And so the books matter. The library matters. The library matters. They sure do. Savannah, back to you. It, it's so, so touched yes. by this. And yeah. Jen, I know you in particular from West Virginia, you have such a heart for this part of the country. You've done the amazing work with Save the Children. Being with those kids yesterday, what's your takeaway? My takeaway is really that resilience Resilience comes from the doing. It comes from the putting one foot in front of the other. It comes from figuring things out and acting on it. But it also can't happen in a vacuum. Sometimes you need community to wrap themselves around you. And boy, this community is strong. The teachers are amazing. The leadership's incredible. And Save the Children is really proud to be an ongoing, ever steady presence in this community. And I'm, I'm proud of what, what they've all accomplished together. Yeah, it's, it's completely beautiful and I know that you guys have got a little something up your sleeve a few surprises for the kids this morning we certainly do we do well so the Today Show reached out and shared the incredible stories of these kids with the folks at Scholastic
and Scholastic was so touched they wanted to help. Jan, you want to do the honors? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right. <clears throat> they wanted to do something special for the students joining us live this morning from Robinson Elementary and Buckhorn. So I'm going to have the students and the teachers help me with a little reveal. They don't know this surprise. Okay, ready? All right. Guys, are you ready? Yeah. Let's count down. Ready? Three, two, one. Let's go, <laughs> Bugs! <laughs> Each child can take home a few of their very own today. Wow. Okay, the teachers. <laughs> Not only that, <laughs> bags are going to every teacher filled with books, filled with books for their classrooms and for them. And while the students start picking out some good reads to take home, we want to bring uh, in our librarian. Yes, you met her in the peas, Antoinette is here. Antoinette Vermillion, come on in. You know, stand right in here. Yes, ma'am. You're not going to cry, are you? No, hopefully no, okay. not. <laughs> um, so what does it mean to these kids to take home books? It means a lot. You know, I mean, they're replenishing their libraries because they lost. You know, they lost a lot of books. They lost a lot in the flood. So this is a good thing. Well, that's not well, that's good. not all. Okay, Scholastic wanted to help not just the students here with us, but both schools as a whole. Right, here we go. Oh, wow. Here we go. They are pledging to donate 5,000 books to Robinson and 5,000 books to Buckhorn's future libraries wow. to help replenish what was lost in the flooding. Awesome. So 10,000. 10, Books. Can amazing. you hold all 10,000 of those we'll in your cart? Sure can't. No, not in my cart. <laughs> no, definitely not, but we'll make sure that we have a place for them. They have a home on the shelf. Oh, well, great. I have a feeling there are going to be some happy tears. Oh, yes. 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 Most definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, back to you. Wow. Oh, good work. Thank Way you. Go. That was so Kids running to get their books. I don't know if Antoinette can hear us, Cynthia and Jen, but just have her say something about what reading means to these kids for them to hold a brand new book yeah. and bring it home the pride that they'll have and the excitement they would have it means a lot they love to read they enjoy it uh, they get excited when i push the card in and they get to choose a book so this will help out even more oh, yes for them to even and have a lot of these kids home. don't have books yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of them don't have books so this will help Wow. Well, that was well, that was. It's a free book fair. Yes, yes. <laughs> Who we just love a book just fair? Say right. to you, Antoinette, this beautiful work that you're doing. It, it, we see you this morning. The whole country sees you out there every day pushing your cart, and you might not. You might think, "What does it matter?" Well, it matters. Yep. It's inspiring. Thank you. Coming up next, our girl Allie Love surprises the dance teacher who believed in her from the very beginning. Do not miss this one after the break. Welcome back to The Boost. From dancing for the New York Knicks to gaining fame as a Peloton instructor, 
Allie Love has made a career of expressing herself and lifting up others through movement. Well, now Allie's going to introduce us to the woman who helped set it all in motion. I often say that dance is a form of communication for me. There were many years from when I was young, even at this age, where I can't express how I truly feel. So deep, so personal, and just so individual. When I was on stage, I could take risks. And dance provided me a way to be big, to be bold, to be confident, to be daring. Two, round through three. I met my first ballet teacher in high school, and her name was Ruth Reason. Two. And after my first class, Miss Ruth came up and she was like, you know what, we want to get you more ballet classes. And she gave me an address and she said, tell your parents, if you can, to come here on Saturday and we'll take care of everything else. And from there, I've never lost that space at the bar, that place at the bar where I feel a sense of belonging. My heart has been here and it's never stopped. Plie and finish. And Miss Ruth is a legend in my mind. She's taught over 7,000 dancers over the course of 35 years. But her instruction goes far beyond the dance studio. Miss Ruth is like a mom to all of us. She's helped build my confidence in dance and she's helped me like grow. Miss Ruth has probably been my biggest supporter here at Armor. Morally, physically, mentally, she's just always been there and a person for me to go to. Resist the air. Three. For the past several years, I've been involved with Armor Dance Theater's scholarship yeah. program, which provides opportunity for youth to have access to quality dance at no cost. As a teenager, I was welcomed into the program. Head down two. With Miss Ruth in my corner, I was exposed to the possibility of what I could achieve. Growing up, I did not see dancers who looked like me. It allowed me to step out there and say, you know what, if there's going to be a first, why not me? That mentality stuck with me throughout my career in dance. And I wanted to go back and thank Miss Ruth for believing in me. All right, y'all, I am at Armor Dance Theater. I haven't been here for years, and I'm so excited because I'm going to surprise my former dance teacher and mentor, Miss Ruth. Front fist, front fist. And one, two, three, rush. <laughs> I can't even tell you how good it felt to be reunited with Miss Ruth. <laughs> the truth is that I wouldn't be who I am without you. You would. Miss Ruth came into my life at the right time. I remember on my freshman year in college, I was going to another summer intensive. It was not related to here. And I didn't have the means to buy extra tights or ballet shoes. And I called Miss Ruth and asked her if she could pay for it. And she did. She never left me. I always had you to figure it out, whether you knew that or not, in the back of my mind. I wasn't alone in the dance world because I had Miss Ruth. That's so important to us that, Sorry. <laughs> that we're always there because Again, they, they, they're seemingly such small things, but they're big things if they're out of your reach and you need them to accomplish your goal. Yeah. To have a white ballet teacher look at me and say, you can be great when the ballet world is white, you can be ballet, it's huge, huge. I was like, well, if she said it, I can be it. Front and back and front. I just, I couldn't be prouder of her because Ali's carrying forth our mission and our vision. It takes one person to change your life and one person to believe in you. And she really believed in me. She believed that I could be the best part of myself. Chanel Jones got her own dance tutorial from a mom who turned a career setback into social media fame, getting her groove back and spreading joy on Instagram. I never met a dance floor I didn't like. Kelly Arning has been dancing her whole life. For her, it's as easy as one, two steps. You've been a lifelong dancer. Tell me how long you've been dancing. I actually started as a competitive baton twirler. And my baton teacher told me that in order to be a better twirler, I should take dance. And from day one, I loved it. Kelly danced her way through elementary and middle school.
before waltzing back to twirling in high school and college. I twirled for the University of Tennessee. I was a majorette for the Pride of the Southland Band. And Peyton Manning was my quarterback. Her passion for the art took her to the Chicago Bulls dance team, the Lovables. Fortunately, Michael Jordan had literally just left, so I missed wow. him. To live in Chicago by myself and make it on the Chicago Bulls dance team was a dream come true. An ACL tear for the third time forced Kelly to hang up her dancing shoes. Life moved on for Kelly. She got married, had two boys, and built a thriving career as a social media manager. But everything changed a year ago. We lost our biggest account, and that was my account. And so when that went away, I was lost, and I'm trying to figure out what, what am I supposed to do now? She did the only thing she knew how, get dancing. When did you get that itch? I was watching this uh, Justin Timberlake dance video, Can't Stop This Feeling video. And I thought I'm gonna learn that and just put it up on Instagram and see what happens. After a slow start, Kelly's videos picked up steam, garnering more and more views. And then, Kelly started choreographing her own dance videos and posting them to Instagram. What followed was a barrage of dancers and non-dancers alike coming to her page for the way it made them feel. I just kept hearing that word, joy, joy. And I thought, you know what, this is bringing me joy. So I, I will absolutely keep doing it if it's bringing others joy as well. You're dancing in your house, by the pool, on the street. My street dances are actually a favorite. My husband actually films those. He never gives me any grief about it. What do you want the takeaway to be? Whatever that little spark in you is, find it and go and do it. I put my dancing shoes on to get a quick tutorial from the pro. You're going to go out and cross, out and cross, and slide together. Hitchhike, hitchhike, John, Travolta, hoop, and clap. Good teacher. So let's just try it with the music. the break it's not your run-of-the-mill clothing company we have a whole lot more to give your day a boost coming up right after this
the Boost introducing you to two friends turned business partners who are running a very different kind of company. They make athletic gear for your workout that also helps out the planet. It's our promise to make the world a better place through running. And how'd you come up with the name? We knew we wanted to use an apparel brand based in running, which is a sport that we love, to make a difference in the world. Activewear brand Janji is making waves with its commitment to expanding access to clean water, giving 2% of its proceeds to further the cause all around the globe, from the Philippines to Mexico to the American Southwest. Mike Bernstein and Dave Spandorfer started the company in 2012 and are approaching a major milestone. By the end of this year, we should have given our $1 million back toward water causes. This journey, beginning with an idea, sparked at a track meet in college. How do you decide we want to make a difference in the world and we want to do it through the lens of a running apparel line? It was the hottest recorded day in May history in Cleveland, Ohio. We had water on two sides of this track. Someone spraying us down, someone giving us these cups of water. And we had had experiences learning about the water crisis. It was during that track meet that this idea crystallized. They ran with that idea. Now, each season's collection focuses on one region, featuring designs of local artists. The company also partners with organizations on the ground to improve access to clean water. It's just one of these problems where it, it literally trickles down into so many facets of society. You have kids that are, are sick, so they're not able to go to school, they're not getting education. You have parents that aren't working. And if you can find a solution for that community, the impact is just immeasurable. Janji has even navigated uncharted waters by developing sustainable clothing. How is your apparel line different? We have multiple certifications to ensure that the product is produced the right way. 74% of our synthetics are made with recycled polyesters. And then we have a five year run ever guarantee so that every single Janji product lasts a minimum of five years. And then we also have the first ever biodegradably enhanced synthetic running top. This shirt, which is made with polyester, it doesn't take 400 years to decompose. It is gone in a landfill in under four years. One of the big problems that adds to the landfill situation in, in this country and really around the world is there's so much production. The most important thing is avoiding pieces ending up in that landfill. And so on the one side, we make gear that lasts. On the other side, we're, we're very conscious of how much we make. We make very limited run collections so that when they sell out, they're gone. But at the same time, there's not excess pieces at the end of the season that we are throwing away. The duo hoping to continue turning the tide. Do you worry that some of these other companies kind of take notice and go, oh, we like what they're doing. We're going to do that. Look, if we, the big companies out there, decided they wanted to give 2% of their sales toward water projects, make things incredibly sustainable, have a five-year guarantee, work with artists, that's awesome. We would love to be an inspiration, not just for the big companies, but, but new entrepreneurs out there who are starting businesses and doing something really special with their time, with their energy, with their career, because we feel so lucky to be able to do this in the sport that we love and a way to see the world around us. Now to a marathon runner who's made remarkable strides to get where he is today, achieving a new personal best every time he competes. NBC's Kate Snow has his story. For Rasan Thomas, running feels like freedom. The native New Yorker okay. training for the city's upcoming marathon after 22 years behind bars. My first marathon was in San Quentin State Prison. It was 105 laps around a prison yard. In 2000, Rasan was locked up for shooting and killing a man during a drug deal. But while facing a life sentence, he turned his own life around. In prison, Rasan got an associate's degree and started writing for the San Quentin News. It is something to be really proud of. He even co-hosted a podcast about prison life that was a finalist for a Pulitzer Prize. It's also where he met volunteer teacher Claire Gelbert. And we just sort of hit it off. The two made a pact to one day run the New York City Marathon. So you make this deal that it, when you get out, if you get out, you're we'll going to do it together. together. Yes. Uh, what's, what's up, James? What's up, my Rassan's sentence was commuted by California's governor for dedicating himself to his rehabilitation, and he was released this February. 
You aren't healed up yet? He and Claire now running with a new mission for Empowerment Avenue, a group Rassan founded to help publish the work of incarcerated writers and artists. If you just treat people like human beings, you change their hearts, you change their minds. His hope to change the American prison system one step at a time. For people that hear you're running and hear your story and think, but wait a second, he killed someone. Yeah. What do you say to them? First I say, I'm sorry. And then I would say, um, I can't pay my debt sitting in the cell. If I can make people who once harmed society love society, that's the best way I can pay for my crimes. You can't ever undo the past. There's no way to restore that justice. The only thing I can do is pay it forward. Kate Snow, NBC News, New York. We've got more good news after the break. Do not go anywhere. Back to the boost, we've got another fun story for you. Check it out. For a second grade teacher named Rachel invited her boyfriend to come to her classroom to be the mystery reader for the day. So everything was totally normal. Then Austin surprised everybody with an extra page at the end of the book. And that page went a little bit like this. Now, as we approach this new stage of life, there is no question that I want you as my wife. <gasps> Now there is something still missing. Yes, just one thing. And that is a beautiful radiant cut diamond ring. Okay, Austin, you did it. That's the greatest mystery reader of all time. He dropped down on one knee. Got the question. Wow. The, seventh, the second graders, by the way, loved it. Oh, yeah. They gave their blessing, and Rachel, of course, said yes. Thank you so much for joining us for today. We hope we boosted your spirits, and we will see you tomorrow with more fun right here on Today All Day. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back, here we go. Boom. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. <laughs> happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome back to Pop Start Plus. You know, with shows like The Real Housewives, Below Deck, and Top Chef, Bravo, which by the way is owned by our parent company, NBC Universal, has impacted pop culture over the last two decades and helped launch the careers of Andy Cohen, Teresa Giudice, Bethany Frankel, and others. And thanks to our sponsor, State Farm. Throughout today's entire episode, we're going to be covering everything and all things Bravo, including an inside look at its annual fan convention, BravoCon, and flashbacks to when Bravo celebrities have stopped by Studio 1A. There's a theme here. We're going to start with the Bravoholics fans of the network. That's what they're called. 
Uh, what keeps them so invested? We hit the ground at this year's BravoCon to find out. For Bravo fans, watching their favorite shows is more than just a hobby. Bravo to me is just my way of life. I'm a day one Bravo fan. Probably know more about Bravo than I do about my job. We're mothers of young children. Bravo has been a constant in helping us disconnect and watch something that makes us happy. You have people like OBGYNs on Married to Medicine saying what it's like to be a black woman doctor. You have yachties saying what it's like to work on a yacht, you know, and it's just amazing to see all these different stories on one network. Over the last 20 years, Bravo and its wide-ranging reality TV shows have made a mark on pop culture. You look at the franchise of The Real Housewives, which has changed the game of what reality TV looks like. You now have these TV reality stars that have become A-listers, and everyone wants to be around them. All while developing a passionate fan base. We're Bravo-holics. Yeah, I'm a Bravo-holic. It's the only thing I pay for cable network. Counting celebs like Jessica Chastain. You love Real Housewives? I'm upset. <laughs> Nicki Minaj. <laughs> and even John Hamm as members. I heard that you like the Real Housewives franchise. Is that a Brother. fact or is that faux news? No, that's, that's, that's real. Alongside fans from across the world. We are from Florida. Yes. I'm from Katy, Texas. We're from London. Wichita, Kansas that show extreme devotion to Bravo shows and stars. In comparison to other cable entertainment networks, Bravo's parent company found that they have the number one most loyal fans, which is huge. They have a whole different style of fandom because they want to engage with the Bravo Lebs and be a part of their everyday lives. In fact, 25,000 Bravoholics descended upon Las Vegas for this year's BravoCon, the annual fan convention to meet their favorite star. This is Sin City, so to have all these folks dressed up in glam to the T with sparkles, it's just gaudy and I love it. Vegas was just the perfect place to come. A weekend where fans bet it all on Bravo. I can't wait to meet all the housewives and we're just gonna honestly just thrive the entire weekend with all of them. So there's just awesome people here. We've made friends from Everywhere. LA, Connecticut, all over. Um, it's the friendliest place in the world. Sharing the shows with my wife. It's, it's one of our favorite things to do is to watch the, the housewives when I get home from work. We feel like we know the cast members, so to see them here in person, it's just amazing. And even Jake from our sponsor State Farm got in on the action. For Bravo Labs, the fans make the experience even more special. I'm feeling all the feels and it's incredible. This has got to be the best part of being a housewife. They're so lovely. They come and hug you and they kiss you and they're like, I love it so nice. It's so nice that like everyone came from all over just to be here together, sharing, bonding over something that is like a shared love for them. That's really cool. Proving that this fandom shows no signs of stopping. Well, this is a onesie for my future baby. I foresee myself as being a fan for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'll be watching Bravo until the end of time. <laughs> If that glimpse wasn't enough for you, today's Donna Farazon went behind the scenes at BravoCon to get a glimpse of all the action. Take a look. Are we ready for BravoCon? Yeah! BravoCon! BravoCon! From tea spilling panel interviews to star meet and greets and interactive exhibits. BravoCon is the three-day conference for fans who can't get enough of all things on the Bravo Network, whose parent company is NBC Universal. They look cheap and cool. Bravo celebrities from series like Summer House to the Emmy-nominated Vanderpump Rules and housewives from across the country have descended on Las Vegas to interact with their biggest fans. These people are coming from all across the country. What does it mean? Wow, this is like it means so much to me that you guys are here. Like, this is crazy. This is what you came for. Yes. <laughs> We've built other relationships just from being here and experiencing everything together. The Bravo fans stick together. Yes. yes. Is this trip for both of you? It is. It, it is. is. You're I a Bravo fan too? I do watch a lot of shows. They're just real people. I kind of feel like we know them. We even got a backstage sneak peek. Okay, the crowd is electric. How would you describe these diehard Bravo fans? Passionate, fun, wild, <laughs> humorous, 
and excited. <laughs> when a Bravo fan comes up to you, what are the top three things they want to talk to you about? Who's your favorite housewife? Can I have a selfie? Those two things. The Real Housewives franchise has been the centerpiece of Bravo for the past 17 years. Yeah. How has it evolved and what can we expect moving forward? Well, we paid tribute to Vicki Gunvalson uh, at the Bravos. And seeing the 18 years of Vicky's time on television, it just, I think it really was moving for a lot of people because we've captured a lot of people's lives over the years and things happening in front of our cameras that are real impactful things happening in these people's lives that we feel like are our friends. I also got the chance to catch up with two of the stars of Summer House, Paige DeSorbo and Amanda Batula. I'm at Bravo Hood presented by our sponsor, State Farm. Come join us. You guys are the queens of throwing a party though. Yes. Like you know how to make a house party fun. Yes. What are the key elements? A good okay. theme. Yes, you need a good theme. You need a good costume. We actually have fed a lot of our guests like hamburgers, hot dogs, pizza. If you could cross over onto any other Bravo show, we already know this. What would it be? We would be we guests, guests on below deck. deck for the whole season. Yeah. So you'd be just like a yacht attendee. Yes. And we'd be great guests because yes. we don't want them to have to work either. We'd be like, like well, let me make you a drink. Yeah, we want them to so hang out. Partner with our sponsor, State Farm. Yes. There is a really great pool photo op. Mm -hmm. I think we need to lounge by the pool. Yeah, I think we Can you teach me your best poses? What happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas with my playing card questions. You know you've made it as an official Bravo celebrity win. When I can go to a restaurant, say, this is Dr. Simone, I want to eat here, and I can get in without a reservation. How does that feel? <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> Who is the most shocking person to slide your DMs? And I don't really go in my DMs, so if they slid in them, I might miss them. When we come back, we're going to look back at Bravo's Andy Cohen when he chatted with Willie about his career. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus, everybody. If there's one name that's synonymous with Bravo, it is certainly Andy Cohen, the man behind the Real Housewives franchise and host of Watch What Happens Live. Now, back in 2021, Andy chatted with our own Willie Geist about his career in pop culture. It's time for you to plead the fifth. Andy Cohen knows a party is only as good as its host. This is amazing. <laughs> so he keeps the drinks flowing and the conversation crackling on his outrageous late night show, Watch What Happens Live. Congratulations, Willie Geist. You're always very kind to invite me. There is always an anniversary to be celebrated at Sunday today. 100 episodes, five years, yes. 25 weeks doing something. There is 
always an anniversary I find. I am I wrong? And that's why I have you here today. I'd like to yeah. book myself for the five and a half year anniversary. Yes, <laughs> you guys love a milestone. <laughs> What is the magic of that show? The audience is drinking, the guests are drinking. It's a loose atmosphere. And I think people respond to that idea that they don't know what's gonna happen. Including Cohen, who was not about to let a pandemic put a stop to the party. And I am so eager just to get back to doing what we do best here. So what was it like for you to do that show over Zoom. It was weird. I was doing my own makeup to horrible results. Too much, too little, everything, what was the problem? Yeah. Everything, didn't care. We all got a little too comfortable with our yeah. home studios. Yes. What we're wearing on the bottom. Oh, yeah. who was wearing anything on the bottom? Not a lot. Yeah, no. Would I would mean? jump in the pool and then be in a wet <laughs> bathing suit. So I'm gonna skip the makeup today. I mean, yeah. I was a runaway train. <laughs> That chaos also is the fuel for Bravo's wildly popular Real Housewives reality series. So be cool. Don't be all, like, uncool. Which Cohen helped to conceive more than 15 years ago when he was an executive at the network. Today, Andy is the moderator, if you will, of the show's postseason reunions. It lands differently when there are so air crash does, victims. For people who don't know, you started in journalism. Yes. At CBS News. I you remain in journalism. I walk into a Housewives reunion and my attitude is, this is news for a lot of people. I mean, I gotta get answers it's from these people. Meaningless, of course, but it's a form of news nonetheless. <laughs> Let's go back to like 2005 when you're cooking this up. What did you really? think it would be back well, then? Well, when it started, it seemed like a sociological time capsule of this group of women who were kind of nouveau riche in a gated community in Orange County who spoke to their children in a way that none of us had ever seen. They have given me and many others inordinate amounts of pleasure. And I don't think we can even call it a guilty pleasure anymore. So many it's people watch it. It's a pleasure. Keep it together, Aviva. The yes. only thing that is artificial or fake about me. This. Yes. Oh, oh. There are some moments that were made that were incredible on television that we thought, how authentic is it that this woman is taking her leg off in Le Cirque and throwing it to make a point? We've been to the so, mountaintop. We've yeah. been to the mountaintop. We put extremely charismatic, sometimes temperamental, always humorous, sometimes volatile women, you know, in a mix and see what happens. The 53-year-old Cohen, who has written three memoirs, now has rounded up wisdom from some of his favorite women in the pages of a new book called Glitter Every Day, 365 quotes from women I love. Women have shaped me for my entire life, from my mom, to mentors, to the housewives, to divas and icons. So this is a quote a day by a woman that I love. I mean, it's all over the place. It's funny you say that, because I thought this captured you perfectly. On one page, we have a quote from Anne Frank. Yes. As I turn the page, Countess Luann. Thank you. That's Andy Cohen in a nutshell. It absolutely is. Two women that I respect immensely and who have different things to offer the culture. And is it true that Hoda Kotb gave you the idea for this book? Hodes didn't just give me the idea, I basically just stole the idea <laughs> from her. Kind of halfway through writing it, I FaceTimed her and said, I need to make sure this is okay with you. <laughs> She's like, write your book, babe, write your book. The quote from the great Evelyn Cohen. My mom. Her quote is, Get a hold of yourself, Andy. Yes, that is a quote that renders me slapped in the face. Get a hold of yourself, Andy. And I will quite literally get a hold of myself and come back to Earth. Cohen's parents, Lou and Evelyn, who have become Bravo fan favorites in their own right, now are grandparents to Andy's two-year-old son, Benjamin. They seem to be thoroughly enjoying this ride that you're on. They are, because this was the kid 
that no one saw coming. My mom would say, you're flying to LA for a party right now. When are you gonna have a kid? So I proved them all wrong. Where's Ben? Where's daddy? Yes! I feel an extra weight on me as a single parent sure. to really let him see that I'm around. Now, New York is thumping in a sense, mm -hmm. and I'm anxious to be part of the thump. Oh, you yeah. still have it? I, it's turned down a little bit. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. And I nap when he naps. So you're gonna get to the club, start checking the yeah, watch. Yeah, I can't get to the club. Yeah, yeah. Okay, before I let you go, is there an Andy Cohen quote, a word to live by from Andy Cohen? Happy anniversary Sunday today. <laughs> Well, Andy's uh, pretty much a regular around here today, so always good to see him. And more recently, he stopped by Studio 1A with a guest in tow, talking about Jen Alliance, the former president of J. Crew, who joined the reboot of The Real Housewives of New York City. Let's check their chat out with our own Hoda. Andy, <laughs> Hoda. season 14. Season 14. Okay, how does it feel? Like, is, is every season like, oh my gosh, it's a new baby. Well, Here this we really go. is a new baby yeah. because we've taken a beloved member of the Housewives franchise yes. and totally rebooted it mm -hmm. with a group of fresh, energetic, yes. fashionable, aspirational, brilliant women. Jenna at the forefront. Uh, Jenna, <laughs> How did you of get course. Jenna to do it. Well, it's kind of incredible. I mean, look at him. We had a How couple, can I say no? We had a few <laughs> long conversations, yes. come to Jesus conversations, yes. as yes. they were. And Jenna went in for the trust fall, and I'm so glad she did because she is a brilliant. Brilliant Real Housewife, and the show is wonderful, and it's fun to watch. And I think for people who've always loved the Housewives, yeah. this gives people what they love about the show. But it's yeah. fresh and new. It's dramatic. It's funny, and it's New York. So everyone has a vibe about them, Jenna, yes. um, on the show. Yes. Some sometimes there's the funny one, the ditzy one, the mean one. What one are you? I think I'm the cold one. The cold one? <laughs> I didn't mean to, but I'm a little bit more reserved. I think I was just nervous. It's yeah, it's intense, but I I, I warm up. I'm, I'm also, the cold one. I think <laughs> that's funny. I know, but I think I actually get more vulnerable. I cry. She I laugh. does. I do everything you think I wouldn't do. Now let me ask you, yeah. why did you say yes? I know Andy's very convincing, but aside yeah. from the charm, I, what made you say yes? I think to two this? things. I think that the franchise has been really beloved. It feels like a part yeah. of New York. I remember when it first came out, and I was so excited about it. And what I loved was that this time they were bringing on a totally different group. This was not about like doing what they've done before. When bringing I spoke, one person in. Yeah, yeah. It, it felt like it was a total yeah. change up, and the cast is very diverse in age, in ethnicity in look and feel and style and personality. And that, to me, was a big game changer in terms of the way that the show... So, Andy, when you are choosing, do you, by the way, are you the guy? Do you go yes, no, yes, There's no? There's a team. I'm on it. And mm -hmm. it's a great team. And we've been doing it for a, a while. And in doing it, you know, look, we wanted everything that Jenna said. We also wanted a group. I think when you watch yeah. the show uh, on Sunday night on Bravo and then Peacock, when it premieres, you're going to see a cohesive group. And I think it was a, you know, bringing out a new group yeah. of Real Housewives of New York. It was a tough thing to reboot, mm -hmm. but we did it. And the group is really something else. I just remembered suddenly something Kathy Lee said to me a long time ago. She said, it's can I have more wine? <laughs> she said, she, can I have she said, more wine? She said, it's not about you being a great personality or you. She used to say this about me and her. She said, it's always about what's in between. Yes. It's about the space yes. in between. That's right. And so that's, true. that's what, so what is the, what's the vibe like I of the house? I think the thing that I found most interesting is that you go into it thinking you know someone. And what happens is you very clearly see quickly that you don't know people. Yeah. And what you assume and what you expect are not what you find. What's also interesting is that Jenna now is seeing the episodes yes. for the first time. So yeah. she's now seeing what her friends said oh. about her oh, about behind you. her back. Yeah. Do you still like them? Yes. Some of them? Just ahead, we're going to revisit one of Bravo's biggest pop culture headlines of the year. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Last March, Bravo's Vanderpump Rules made headlines when an affair was revealed on the show. And cast member Ariana Maddox stopped by Hoda and Jenna to explain her side of the story. Ten years ago, Vanderpump Rules burst onto the Bravo scene. A spinoff of the successful Real Housewives franchise, starring Beverly Hills alum Lisa Vanderpump and the employees who work at her restaurants. You hate You know me. what? You're not important enough to hate sit down. While the show has been filled with drama, on screen feuds, and breakups, one constant since the second season in 2013 has been the relationship between longtime Vanderpump bartenders turned stars, Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox. I would love to live with you. So fans were shocked when news broke in March that the couple had split after Maddox discovered an affair between Sandoval and her close friend and fellow cast member, Raquel Levis. Soon after, both Sandoval and Levis issued apologies to Ariana, expressing their regret. The cheating scandal, now dubbed the Scandaball, instantly captivated pop culture. Videos with the hashtag Scandaball, numbering more than 380 million views on TikTok alone. The highly anticipated Vanderpump finale aired last night and included Ariana speaking out about the affair and confronting Sandoval. I regret ever loving you. And next week, Bravo will air the start of the Vanderpump Rules cast reunion, shot in March, where emotions were clearly still raw. I can't think of two worse people. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, hi. Ariana. Hi. Yeah. We feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah. You just watch that. It's, yeah. it's a reality television show, but it's also your life. Yeah. yeah. What When you look back at some mm -hmm. of those images over nine mm -hmm. years of dating, how, how does it sit with you? Um, it's not easy. Um, I'm on TikTok a lot. Like, mm -hmm. they're just talking about TikToks. Yeah. And the, sometimes the algorithm feeds me that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that sometimes it's painful, but I think that the person that I thought that I loved or that I miss sometimes is not really there. So it makes it a little bit easier to cope with I mean, that. it is painful to watch it. I watched it last night, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe what you know, you've been sort of living through. Um, you're clearly angry at him. Are you? Uh, or are you I, past that? I think I'm past really? the anger. How did you I get mean, past here it? and there? Yeah. <laughs> how did you, how, like, what has helped yeah. you through this? Because there are many women out there who can't necessarily yeah. relate with the reality TV mm -hmm. and the 380 million <laughs> TikToks, but they can relate with being yeah. devastated. Um, I think my way of getting past the anger stage was just I became so disgusted, which then yeah. turned me into a place of almost indifference yes. because apathy. Yeah, yeah apathy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's also my brain trying to protect itself in a way, but that's kind of where I'm at at this who, moment. Who were you more upset at? Because they, Tom cheated, obviously, your partner of all those years. And then one of your closest and best friends. Mm -hmm. And we watched as she was saying to you, like asking you about the relationship, like, how is everything going with you guys? Clearly yeah. with an ulterior motive. Yeah, I would say I place more of the blame on him because yeah, he was yeah. the one in the relationship, yeah. even though she was my very close friend. Yeah. Um, I do think that ultimately it is the responsibility of the person in the relationship to set those boundaries. You know what? And that's a really good outlook um, yeah. because I think sometimes it's easier to sort of blame the woman. Yeah. Do you think you could ever be friends with her again? I don't. I really don't. I just don't. I just don't trust yeah. that person. And I think, you know, you even hear my ex on the show last night mm -hmm. saying, it's, I know it's hard for Ariana to trust people. And so, mm. in a, so it, it has been over many years. And it took me a long time to get to a point where I did trust new friends and stuff. So I think that once that trust is broken, I don't see going back. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, like, think in revenge terms, like, oh, God, I'd be happy if X just happened to him or if he knew what this felt like or whatever. Do you have a something in your mind that would say, well, now he knows how badly he hurt me if this would happen to him? You know what? I just don't know if he's capable of getting there emotionally. Oh. I, I, that's just, I, I don't know. And I definitely had those, you know, early yeah. on, I had those super angry moments yeah. where I was like, I wish Revenge. this and yeah. that. And then I just felt like that was keeping me in a place that wasn't good for me mentally. So that's kind of why I tried to really push myself to just think about me and my future. 
Um, but yeah, I honestly don't know if there's anything that would give him that, you know? And hearing that, I, they had an I love you exchange. And I was just thinking of what it would feel like to be you watching your former friend and your former boyfriend say that. Not great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I definitely felt, well, it was very odd because it was a they love you an and then it was a very awkward. You, and then yeah. I love well, you. Like, whoa. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it wasn't great. But at the same time, it's like, I mean, how many times did I tell her I loved her? Right. Yeah. And she said it to me. So I almost wonder, like, like do you love, know what it means? Mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. they said they broke up yesterday or something. That it all, that they're yeah. not together anymore. I don't know if I believe that, but, yeah. yeah. You think it may just be a little bit of a... I, you know, boy. well, sometimes I feel like things come out and there's, like, a, there's a source, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I'm always like, who's, who's the, the source? source? Who said that? Totally. Yeah. yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for sticking with us. And don't forget, you can stream Bravo's shows on demand on Peacock. That wraps it up for us. Have a great weekend, everybody. I knew you were a hoarder collector. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, man. So when people come in from here, the first thing they see is the posters. So we got Oakley here. Well, Black Raiders. Black Jesus, bro. <laughs> These are my guys. So here you are, it's Spike Lee Creative Source. Bro the Brooklyn Museum. Mm -hmm. You are a who would have thunk it? I was going to say who would have thunk it. You are a son of Brooklyn, and you have a major exhibit in the Brooklyn Museum. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? It feels great. And uh, here's a story. When people come to my office in Fork and Brooklyn, they say, "This looks like a museum." You should, have, you should let people in your office see it. Say, "Uh, uh." <laughs> so my office is private. So this is a chance for people to see, the public to see, the people, especially from the Republic of Brooklyn, New York, to see all the stuff I've had, I have on my walls, in my homes, in my office, and in storage. And all this stuff is part of people who I've looked up to, not just the sports, just these, the people here are my pantheon. Mm -hmm. And by the way, your mom would bring you here. Yes. Growing up. My mother was, I mean, not just me, my siblings too. Yeah, so sure. my mother, my late mother wanted her children to be well-rounded. Well and she did a great job. Not just me, all my siblings, you mm -hmm. know, are, 
or well educated and, and, and immersed in the arts. So how do you, when you've got a, a, a 1,000 piece plus <laughs> collection spread out, how do you bring that down to 470 so or so pieces? How do you, how do you make the choice? Well, I'm gonna be honest. It was a little push and shove to get into that number. <laughs> all of, all of. <laughs> but I want it to look like my office. I not want to look like a oh, museum where there's a, something here and something here. It's divided up into sections, but I just wanted to get the, I don't want to be stingy. Mm -hmm. I, wanted, I want the world to see the stuff. Why? Because it needs to be seen. Also, it might give people like a little insight to you know where my influences are from. You know who my heroes or heroines, the the pantheon. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people here are gonna do their research. You know, got their phone. Like, who is this person? Who is this? It's education. It's it's educational. And what's interesting about this is that there are movie posters. There's sports memorabilia, but there's there's kind of politics, a politics, art, art. and it's all, all my. I was going to say this. These are all the parts of Spike Lee. Yes, and, and you know, one day they'll go back and trace, look in this exhibition where where this fit in with my, you know, body of work, mm -hmm. narrative and documentaries. I've been to your house and I've seen all a lot of this on the wall, but. I had no idea the depth of the, I mean, this is less than half of what you've got. When did this start? Starting when I was a kid in Brooklyn. My friends and I, we would go to Rosa Hotel because that's where the National League teams would stay. So Willie Mays, when the, when the Giants in New York, the Shea Stadium, we're at the hotel, waiting for Willie to come out. <laughs> we, got, we got the baseball cards. We got those three by five index cards too. Mm -hmm. When the Braves come out, wait, Hank Aaron, where's Hank Aaron? The Pirates, where's Clemente? Where's the Clemente? And also, besides the sports, I collected Marvel comic books. I, I, I like DC. I was more of a DC. I, I, you you like Daredevil? I did like Daredevil. So where did, where did this love of film come from? Where, how did that start? Well, the plants, the plants was, were planted early. My father hated Hollywood films. Hated them. So I'm the eldest, so I was my mother's movie date. That's how it happened. Now, plants don't grow and bloom right away. So we had to plant the seeds. Sure. So it was to a college that those seeds came out. But going to the movies, I, I didn't even know about it. I just went to the movies. That's yeah. it. I didn't think about who's directing, who's writing it. You know, you look at the, the, the people on the screen, but not behind the screen. So. It was when I was in college, went to Morehouse College that, uh, that I had to choose a major. And that major was mass communications, film, print journalism, radio, photography. And Morehouse, Morehouse didn't have that major. I took that major across the street at Clark College. So that's, that's where it started. As you started to think about this, you know, maybe becoming a director, becoming, moving into film, and your dad was, was a jazz musician. Yeah. Did that impact your directing? You know, the... It didn't impact my directing, but I knew I had a great, I just grew up having a great appreciation for jazz. Mm -hmm. So it's been reflected in, you know, almost all the films I've done, even the films I did without my father doing a score. When you do these films, and in the beginning, you were in some of your movies. Yeah. The only reason I was in She's Gonna Have because the first film, because we didn't have any money to pay anybody else. But behind us, you see some game-worn Jordans. Mm -hmm. And because of the character I played, Mars Blackman, that's how me and Mike got hooked up with the uh, commercials that changed the whole game. Michael, Mars, and MJ. So it's funny how things work. Did you ever think that maybe acting again? No. <laughs> I do them. I knew the commercials with, 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 with Sam, Barkley, and Magic, but 
I knew Mars. I wasn't have to act. Mm -hmm. So Nike's agency, they saw she's going to have it. So it was their vision to pair my character, Mars, from She's Gonna Happen with the GOAT, Michael Jordan, and, and it changed everything. You know, Nike went to the stratosphere. Yeah. In fact, before really doing the right thing, people only knew me, didn't know who I was, just that crazy guy in the commercial mm -hmm. of Michael Jordan. Where are we going? What's the future of filmmaking? You know, when you kind of start looking at AI and all this stuff, where, where are we going? AI, that's the thing that scares me. Does it? I mean, just these stories and novels and movies, it's not science fiction today. Yeah. That stuff is here. And as far as the arts go, I just think that it's very dangerous where a soulless, non-human being is thrust into the art world. There's a lot of stuff about copyright, you know, and ownership. I'll just say a straight up theft. Posters, the movie posters. Now, of course, they're the you know your movies in there, but not all of them. But not all. That's what I was going to say. I think people would be surprised to see how many other movie posters there are. Are those movies that? There's nothing in this ex exhibition that does not mean something to me. But I've been very, I've been lucky. Let me tell you a story. So my films are showed worldwide. So when it comes out, I gotta get on a plane. So. I was in Rome, I forgot what film it was. And my publicist, I, I asked my publicist, do you know Fellini? Yeah, I know him. I said, can you call him up, see you at dinner with me? Tonight, come to this restaurant. So for like four years in a row, every time I went to Rome, I was having dinner with Fellini. And every time I went, not the first, the, the other three times, I had posters in the sign. <laughs> so you see the poster signing me from Fellini. La Dota Vita, Eight and a Half, La Strada, signing me from Federico Fellini. When you're sitting across from Frederick, from Fellini, <laughs> what, what are you, what? He was just, he, he's, I mean, he's funny. He had me dying. And we had like that red wine, Italian. <laughs> We're in Rome, drinking wine, and I'm sitting across the table with Fellini. I'm like, bam! <laughs> Scorsese? Because, because when you, and you're in film school, because I, look, I, the, these world cinema, I was introduced to until I was in graduate film school, NYU. But when you see these, these great films and you're able to know them, and they're signing stuff to you too, it looks like, and they see my films too. You know, it's not, I'm so, I'll give you a line from Scorsese. I'm not, not like I'm some Mama Luke of the year. <laughs> Mama Luke. No Mama Luke's over here. Speaking of which, I'm looking at, I mean, Kahende Wiley. Yes. This, is a, I mean, this, this piece is spectacular. Yeah. 
if you had to pick, what's your favorite? Is there is there a favorite piece of or grouping? Well, there is. Uh, it's not. I'm not gonna pick one, but grouping the net. One of the nets from Game Seven, May Eighth, 1970, versus Los Angeles Lakers, the Willis Reed or and Walt Frazier game. I got the net from that game. I was there too, 13 years old. Wow, what a sports! What because there, it's, it's a huge representation here. What does sports, especially New York sports, mm -hmm. mean to you? I mean, my father, besides being a great musician composer, he loved sports. He always, he always would tell us, me and my siblings, how great an athlete he was. So, my father was a Dodger fan, like all other black people back then. But that, my love, my, mom, my father was taking me to the garden, the old garden, 8th Avenue. Yeah. So that's where my love for Knicks came from. He was taking me to Knicks games. And like, me and my father were not sitting courtside. <laughs> we were in the last row. But you were there. I was there. So I just think about it. I was sitting in the last row at the garden, the courtside. Yeah. And I got this thing from the garden. This will be my 33rd or 32nd or 33rd years of season ticket holders. The Knicks. When you first walked this, once it, everything was hung, mm -hmm. what were your thoughts on it? I was thinking about my parents because mm -hmm. my father just died, you know, in uh, May. My mother died while I was a sophomore in college. So they're a great part of who I am is because who they were. And they were art. My love of sports comes from my father. Music. My mother was a cinephile. So I'm really a product of uh, not just my parents, but the legacy of, mm -hmm. of my ancestors. So, and then a lot of my, my siblings work is here too, you know. So that is my, my brother David's photographer. So many of his photos are here too. What would they think of it? They'd be proud. Yeah. Because it's about legacy and just keeping it going, you know. You just gotta, and everybody, you know, every generation, let's keep it going. Go high and high and I expect the same from South from Jackson. I know you expect the same thing for your children too. You know, we just want, Go, go beyond what we've done. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it going. Yeah, and, and what's interesting about this, too, is, you know, it, it's in different sections. It's, it, there's very personal stuff. Yeah, the family section is very personal. My father did a score for all my films in NYU Graduate Film School. Then she's going to have it. School days, do the right thing, more better blues. So that's, I just, we, I, my siblings, it's not just me. Yeah. My siblings and I, we grew up in a musical household. And there is a musicality to your work. Uh, my father's side of family is uh, all his siblings, parents, grandparents, just a musical background. But what's funny is we were growing up, and my father would come in the house, and we hear Motown and the Beatles, turn that bad music off. He was a jazz purist. I mean, we had, we had like, we were, we were turned up, we were like, Turn it down and put it in <laughs> yeah. right to the, the little transistor radio. So how did that household mm -hmm. kind of influence who you, you've become? Just grew up. I mean, the best example, if anybody's seen Crooklyn, that's, that's the Lee family growing up in Brooklyn, New mm -hmm. York. So my father at one time was a go-to bassist. And so my mother had to work, so she got a job at St. Anne's in Brooklyn Heights. And she supported all. I'm, I'm the first of five. So she would work all day, come home, cook, great papers. But she had a great belief in my, in my father's music, so she supported him. So this is my father, Bill Lee. And uh, this is a letter from the vice president giving her condolences on my father's uh, passing. And this is my mother. It's funny. This thing here, somebody threw it out. It was, a, it was a, right next to my office in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Just threw out this thing. I said, what? I could use this. So I knew I had this picture of my mother. So 
just had this photograph put uh, with this. And it's my mother's mother, mama. Oh. She lived to be 100. Wow. And she put me through Morehouse NYU Graduate Film School. For 50 years, she taught art and saved the Social Security checks 50 years for grandchildren's education. So I'm the oldest, I had first dibs. <laughs> And, that, and that's me. Wait. You were a cutie. Look at you. <laughs> that's fantastic. Dear Ma, that's what you call it. Mm -hmm. Dear Ma and Father Leek, your grandson is here. He weighed the last night at six pounds and eight ounces at 51 p.m. The Leek characteristics are definitely there. He looks <laughs> nothing like anyone on my side of the family. He has those big, long hands, music, musicians, of course, like Bill's, which is my father. Father is coloring or oh, black spiky hair. Wait, is that where spike came from? No. <laughs> <laughs> His spike was a tough baby, but. <laughs> and wait, he's a homely little rascal <laughs> right now. I love the pieces. <laughs>
And so they really saw like, uh, and a lot of people there or from my film family. So it was like a reunion. But they, they know, and they also know that they got to, the, the torch is going to be handed to them. Keep this thing going. They know. That's they, a lot of pressure. They're built for it. They're built for it. What's your legacy? What do you want your legacy to be? The legacy is really the saps from Jackson, because I'm not having no more kids. <laughs> and uh, just got to keep it going. And they're both artistic, you know, doing their thing. Uh, Jackson works from now 40 acres. Satch was a grad school in Chicago for photography. She's a great photographer. And uh, just keep it going. Mm -hmm. Just keep it going. And just, we're lucky because if you, if you can make a living doing what you love, you're blessed. Because yeah. I don't think it's overstating the state. Majority of the people on this God's earth go to their grave having slaved the job they hated. So... You know, we're blessed. There's going to be some small kid who comes in here. How small? <laughs> well, big enough so that they don't touch anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> but some kid's going to come in here. He's going to see this. She, he or she's going to see this. Mm -hmm. What do you want them to take from this? Well, I hope the parents can explain in terms their children, their young children, will understand, you know, just give them a little bit of history, not not to get, you know, that just plant little seeds, maybe. That's the thing. That maybe there's something here that they might want to, will it be photography, sports, politics. Politics, you know. One of my favorites is Shirley Chisholm. First black from Brooklyn, yep. ran for president of the United States. I remember. What do you want people to know about Brooklyn? You could say that same question, what I want people to know about my films. I've always been in the mind state like, people are gonna get what they want from your film, so I, I've always let something happen, you know, some controversy. Try to explain the film. I just, you know, I respect the audience's opinion, what they see, what they don't see, so I let them like, if that's what you got from that, cool. And I would say the same thing for this, that depending on who you are, you're going to get you know, different responses to what are on these walls here. We're all different. Who you are is going to be reflected in what you like and dislike, mm -hmm. what you respond to. Would it be safe to say that if Spike Lee hadn't grown up in Brooklyn, we would have a much different Spike Lee? Yes, I, I like the full confession. I was not born in, right. but I was born in, I'm a Grady baby. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, moved to Brooklyn. But 
I would not be the person who I am if I had not grew up here in Brooklyn. What are you most proud of, Spud? I'll go back. Oh, I get Tanya. I mean, her document just went, got nominated for an Emmy. Aftershock, she's doing her thing. Uh, doing her creative thing. Producing documentaries. Writing. And, and, and just the whole, the Lee family, my children. So that's, that's really, you know, the foundation, you know, your family. Yeah. You know, that's what matters most. And as you look back, any regrets? Anything you... Oh, I mean, there are a lot of regrets. <laughs> but the funny one is, is that, you know, in the summertime, I'm in Marlins Vineyard and Oaks Bluff, and the main street is Circuit Avenue. One day this guy saw me, he said, come here, Spike, I want to show you something. So, just, so I woke him, he opens, opens the trunk of his car, and these ugly looking things. I said, what is that? He said, they're Crocs. I want you to invest, there's a little bit of money, but I'm, 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 uh, I'm trying to get this thing, you know. I said, what are those, are we call them Crocs. I said, I'm sorry, sir. I mean, I can't do that. <laughs> Big regret. He wanted me to invest. He wasn't asking for a lot of money either. Yeah. They you, just looked kind of funny to me, so I, I passed it up. But you did okay. Who do you think people think Spike Lee is? Depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that, uh, uh, that's, that's the answer, that's the answer right there. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Y'all love Al Roker. <laughs>